in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Brought to you by the Schmoes No. Take it away, boys. All right. Welcome, everybody, back to the Top 10 Show. You guys called for it. You guys tweeted. You guys commented. You guys drove everybody a collider crazy. Uh, and you got what you wanted. I'm John Roca. I am Matt Nost. And w- welcome to the top ten show. That's right. Welcome to for those of you who are some of you, some of them are new. Like yeah. some people discovered us. They think after. they've seen the show. Yeah, yeah. They haven't seen the fucking show. No, you haven't seen right the show. Right there's difference number one. I intentionally mm-hmm. dropped a fucking right there. <laughs> we don't go out of our way to curse, but no. we are grown men. We're good at it though. Yeah. <laughs> We Very are true. artists with a cuss word, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like on this show, for people who've listened to us, so... I like you give it a Shakespearean kind of, you know, atmosphere to it. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's... What? Go ahead. Look, if, if we could be as good as Deadwood, then oh, I'd be happy. Dude, no one's as good as Swear Engine, for it's, God's sakes. That show, it's still, like, old fans know. I'm, yeah. Die Hard. Yeah. Die Hard for that definitely show. Definitely a favorite of the top 10 show, that yeah. show. Yeah, definitely. Um, look, like like we were saying, Matt, Matt we're, we haven't been uh, doing the show since October of 2016, it is July of 2017. We haven't done this show yeah. since July of 2016. Oh, this version of the show. Ju- June of 2016 or whatever Right, it was. right. This version of the show. Yeah. Right, the podcast. This is the show. Yeah, right. The other Matt, show Matt's was... Matt's very adamant about this, ladies and gentlemen. Matt's very adamant. Well, no, the other show was a, a variation of this. It was. It wasn't this show. It was a bit uh, watered down, a bit uh, made for television, so to speak. So it yeah. wasn't too insane. We didn't get to go on our tangents quite as much. Uh, but we we had to make it work, and we tried. There's no there's no shame in trying it. No, it just didn't take off the way we had hoped. No, uh, and there are many reasons for that. Yeah, that we have our own personal opinions on, and and Collider has their views on it, or the people from Collider have their views on it. Nothing wrong with that. Sure, yeah. as do the fans. As do the fans. I've seen comments where, hey, this show doesn't work, and other people are like, no, it's really good. Yeah, but they're you know. They either listened before, yeah. or they did genuinely enjoy what we were doing there. Right. And that's fine. All, all opinions are valid. The Absolutely. numbers didn't bear out for what they wanted, and we parted ways. Yeah. You know, but you just saw the both of us on Movie Talk on uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday. So it's not like it's some bitter divorce and Absolutely. we're fighting for custody of right. our kid or something. Right. Uh, Sometimes it just doesn't work out for whatever reason. Yeah. 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 And that's all right. You move on in life. Yeah. So now we're on the Schmoes No Plus podcast yeah. channel. That's... Who you're subscribed to and listening to now on, and there's a bunch of shows on here that are great. You know, Kristen likes us to plug the shows. Uh, 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 Don't be a beardo. The after the Wangers. Show, the Wanger show, right? Schmodown Rundown, the Outlaw Nation show. There's a bunch of shows on here, so we're we're proud to be part of this network and mm-hmm. and see what happens and see how many people. Uh, listen to us and comment back and, and discover the show again, discover us again in our chemistry talking about movies. And so um, I'm I want to say personally, and, and, and I'm, I, I'm sure Matt will take his moment, I'm sure, to say this, too. But like, thanks to everyone who commented. Thanks mm-hmm. to everyone who who tweeted at us and tweeted at them and and really uh, showed love for the show and support for the show because you kept it alive. You kept it alive between us, definitely yeah. between Matt and I. And so the, the, we just had to kind of there were a couple of false starts. There were a couple of possibilities that are in the Air, but things kind of work out the way they're supposed to, I think, sometimes. And this certainly kind of moved into a certain X factor situation where everything kind of lined up, and then we were able to to start over again and do the show. Yeah, we we would not be here without everybody that's been so vocal. Yeah, so vocal to the degree that uh, certain people got mad at us because we had nothing to do with it, and you guys were just so wanting the show back, and yeah. they're like, I can't take this anymore. It's like, I didn't tell them to do this. <laughs> yeah, right. None of us said. Yeah. yeah we never once tweeted made them. a yeah. call to arms. Like, yeah. I've jokingly done it, like uh, firebombing uh, Christian's Twitter on, <laughs> yeah, on the outcast. Like, but that's, yeah, that's fun between. That has mm-hmm. nothing serious. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, never once did we say, you know what, guys? Get that, you know, mail campaign going. They yeah. just did it on their own. So that's that in and of itself. Plus, I think, honestly, I don't know that the show would have continued 
Yeah. Had we just gone a podcast because we were at a weird place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. There was just a lot of stress and pressure uh, to get the show done, and we were doing so many episodes a week, and it was becoming... Uh, it was a full-time job. Yeah, it was becoming without any money, without no. any pay. And, and yeah, there were weeks where we put out, uh, I think... Four episodes sometimes. There was one where we did, we recorded a bunch of yeah. reviews and released each one each day, yeah, plus a that. Thunderdome, plus a regular show. So exactly. there were seven shows that week, and be yeah. like, dude, we're not making... <laughs> Any money, and we're putting in tons of time into editing yeah. and recording and everything else. It's just like I can't, I can't do this. Yeah, yeah. And we're we're exploring the possibility of a Patreon because you guys have been so vocal about the show coming back, and a lot of you express you'd be willing to donate to help the show. And it's not saying you have to; it's saying if there's a possibility, we'll put it out there. And if you want a little bit, a little bit goes a long way, you know, because we 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 spend a lot of time, and Matt and I have a bunch of projects going down uh, separately in our lives, so. Uh, you know, it's just something I'm, uh, we're kicking around. And if we do it, it's not a matter of like making you do it. It's a matter of if you want to donate, you can. Mm-hmm. We're still going to keep doing the show because we love doing the show. And, you know, Matt, Matt's been gracious to come on the Outlaw Nation podcast a couple of times. I gracious, think you, might... you son of a bitch. Well, I'm saying it in a nice way. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You asked me to be on? Sure, I'll be on. Well, you know, I, people are busy. I'm always gracious, uh, grateful when I, people I've, come on. I feel bad I couldn't help you out the other night. It just, I had already. Dude, we, we That's, recorded late. Yeah, it's, it's been right. part of the. And I was like, man, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because okay. I didn't get out of there till 11. Yeah. And I was like, I'm so glad. Well, I think maybe if you have time this weekend or early next week, we can record uh, an MB- all-NBA one before I head off to Comic-Con, and that's a perfect week to drop that one for people when to enjoy. When do you leave for Comic-Con? Wednesday morning. So technically tomorrow when they're hearing this? <laughs> yes, technically tomorrow when they're hearing this. I might be able to swing something on Monday. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do. Yeah. And you certainly, you know, I'll have them buy you dinner if you come over. I'll buy you some Chipotle. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but the best for you, man. It's fine. If you have, you know what? If you have one of my flavored waters, I'll be more than content with it. Oh my god, yeah, it's, um, I, it's, that's a great thing. For those of you who remember the old show, we we flavored water is. Uh, we should get sponsored by this by this. Oh, uh, Arrowhead, Arrowhead sparkling flavor. Oh, I water. love it. I drink this stuff nonstop, man. I've tried every flavor they have. The strawberry is a new release. You enjoy yeah, that? I'm enjoying the strawberry so far. I like a berry <laughs> flavor. You're getting paid for this. <laughs> We should be. I drink the Mandarin Orange almost exclusively. I was just giving that a whirl to see what it was like. Oh, I love berry flavored water, man. I, I, I'm in it. Look at that. That's a little tidbit you wouldn't have gotten on Collider That's that John right. Rogo loves berry flavored water. They would have cut it out. It's too much. It's not enough time. Is that what you just put on like a tender profile or something where you just run out of things to say? I do. I, and I love berry flavored water. <laughs> This dot, guy dot, seems dot. interesting. Dot, dot, dot. And dot, I dot, love dot. with the capital letters, very flavored water. Exactly. Um, well, Matt, we we are back on the Schmoes No Plus podcast channel, and I think we should talk about um, the poll. We send out. We, we 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 you know we were on the Schmoes No show. We promoted the show, and uh, you know, I, I like Matt said, I suggested the idea of having the fans vote on it because Matt and I were mm-hmm. considering what topics, and I was like, let's take it out of our hands because we've kind of like. We've chosen topics for almost two years on this show, and wouldn't it be nice for us to come back because the fans and are coming back? As a yeah. thank you, yeah, you guys were so vocal and supportive throughout, even yeah. when we didn't exist. Still got tagged in all kinds of things. Yeah, uh, Just please come back. Do something. Hey, the right. two of you are great together. Why don't you go do something? We're like, well, <laughs> it's easier said than done, unfortunately. Right, right. Uh, I would love to just... Look, look, if we could just be on a set and they rotate the backdrop for us and be like, we're doing NBA talk yeah, and then we're doing movie talk, no problem with that. Right. If we could just house it in one area and I just chunk out like whatever amount of time, hey, we're going to be here four hours, no problem. I yeah. can make that happen. I'm saying. Uh, I keep I keep telling Matt Nose that we need to have our own Sirius XM radio show, but he's like, I can't do a show every day. And no, we'll, like, we'll kill each other. No, <laughs> we'll kill each other. Not if we have a, not if we have a producer and everything. We, we'll, we'll, we'll kill the producers. We're going to fly through oh, producers. Oh, we would kill producers. Absolutely. <laughs> well, oh if, if, if it's every day, if it's once or twice a week, we're mm-hmm. pleasant people. But yes. if it's every day, then the problem is you bring your real world baggage into work that has no place yeah, there. It's true. So somebody says something, you're just like, what the hell you that? <laughs> you're like, whoa, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I had a lot of issues. Come with me. <laughs> Should be a two baggage flight. Unfortunately, I think I checked four or five bags on this flight. We'd be like, uh, "What's it, Mike and Mike?" The the breakup of Mike and Mike. That's what would be eventually. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we we put uh, what a Twitter poll out there. We put a Facebook poll out pro, pro, uh, poll out there about uh, what topics that were the top four topics that we saw mm-hmm. uh, through people's postings and through people's uh, tweets. And what were the t- four choices again? Top. Com- um, comic movies, come back, comeback films, comic, comic book movies, yeah. war films, and uh, ba- 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 oh, so reboots. Reboots. All right. And what ended up winning, like by a landslide, 
not necessarily on Twitter, but certainly on Facebook, because we have to combine the votes, was yeah. uh, uh, top 10 comeback movies. Well, I mean, on Twitter, it highlights the eventual winner, yeah. which was comebacks. Okay. I don't know by how many, but I mean, what? between the two, there was 4,000 or 4,500 votes. Nice. That's so, amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, for those of you that wanted comic book, trust me, we're... We're going to get to yeah, that. Yeah, it's, I don't know how you dodge that topic. <laughs> we're going to split the atom, as we used to say, yes. quite a bit on here. Yeah. Where some weeks are just going to be this very arcane, esoteric topic. It's going to be like, dude, have you seen the release schedule? Yeah. It's either we're going to cherry pick a good idea or we're going to find something out of this turd right. of a weekend. Those are the worst weeks, too. <laughs> that's what I know. That's, we have to start lining up those lists of, like, for shit weekends, uh, our personal topics that we want to talk about. Oh, yeah. Like probably sometime in September or October. Yeah. And in definitely February. In February, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. January through February. we got two <laughs> pockets where we would just dump movies. <laughs> yeah, I went to see that. Uh, all right. So, Matt, do you want to tell them how the show works? All right. So, comebacks one. So normally when right. John and I uh, set a topic, we don't define what the topic is to the other one. But the problem with comebacks is, the fuck does that mean? Yeah, good call. It's like looking at that and like, I can read this any number of different ways. Yes. So what we settled on were comebacks for uh, actors or directors. Yeah. Just in that since we're coming back and we're two individuals, might as well focus on an individual coming back because it's easier as opposed to if we did comeback movies or something along those lines, it's going to be a ton of sports movies. It'd be all sports movies, which, yeah. which wasn't always our highest rated episodes. No. The so Venn we... diagram of our fans and sports fans, yeah. like they're there. <laughs> it's just not as big as the overall no. of just exactly. movies or any other sh- subgenre for the most part. <laughs> Eventually, though, we will do some sports movies. Yeah, we will. It's the, inevitable. Better lay it down there. Yeah. So, uh, John and I go our separate ways, and we create individual top ten lists. We show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we're uh, finished with our personal top tens, we create the shows between the two of us. Boom! Not bad for a year Look off. Look at that, motherfucker! Not bad for a year off. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. That means I'm going to be able to remember that to the day I die. That's right. If I it's would... locked in after a year away... Seriously, I'm, I may forget, like, my wife's name and some weird form of Alzheimer's, and I'm going to remember that shit. Damn right. Oh, there's another, there's a story <sighs> I tell in my act where there's something I'm never going to forget. It's one of those, I saw a guy. Yeah. I'll do an abbreviated version since we're getting okay. into the show. But the, sure, it, sure. It's a story I tell where I was at a concert, and this guy, so there's a bunch of urinals, and the one next to me was empty, and he comes in, and he fills it. And, like, he, in my peripheral, he keeps kind of going in and out, which is weird. Normally, you just kind of stay stationary. When what do you mean, urinal. go in and out? What do you mean? Like fading in and out of my peripheral vision. Oh, so he's like, it looks like he's pissing, moving backwards and moving forwards. Moving tilting forwards. backwards and forwards. Oh, tilting. <laughs> I apologize. That's drunk. So sir. he disappears and he uh, fell down and he hit his head, I think on the sink and on the ground, but I know the <sighs> ground for sure and knocked himself out. Jesus. But he caught his dick and one of his balls in his waistband because he pulled that down instead of using his fly. So it's a great story to tell on stage. This is the top 10 show, son. Yeah. So he's on, <laughs> on the floor, passed out. Yeah. I'm at a concert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's peeing onto the right side of his face. Shut up. I swear to God. <laughs> he passed out like five seconds into peeing. It's his own fault. And it's just one of those things of, and if you ever come out to the show, I'll finish the rest of the story, but that's the, holy shit. I witnessed that shit. That's, I will remember that for the rest. That is burned into, I was right. 19. Wow. I'm 38. Yeah. That's not going away. Oh, okay. I'll remember other things. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the show. <laughs> So this week, we're choosing comebacks. I've never seen anyone pee on their face. Let me just put that It's ridiculous, there. Yeah, dude. I would imagine so. Did it's you like open weird... up, or did you just kind of watch yeah, it happen? eventually and... I splashed some water on the oh, dude's okay. face. This is before YouTube. You might and have recorded it. And then he stumbled. It. Somebody would have. Yeah. Because we all started laughing to ourselves, because there's a few of us. There are other guys using urinals. It's a concert. You yeah. You kind of see this happen. You're like, how do you not... We're going to help him, but I'm going to laugh at you too, man, because <laughs> this is a fucking good moment in life. You don't get many of these. I went back and told my friends that were sitting down. They didn't yeah. believe me. I was like, I'm not making this up. I literally just saw this. Please believe me. It's the, Please believe me. You ever seen the Chappelle bit? Yeah. We're talking about, yeah, it's somebody you, yeah, you didn't sleep with, and you're like, I did not do it. Please believe. We've all been in that spot. We're like, come on. I swear. I swear. How can I prove that I'm telling the truth? I have a friend who claims I slept with this girl in college. He will never believe that I didn't. Really? He's always, he's like, you know what I mean? That girl you slept with? I go, I never slept with her. Yeah. I never had sex with her. No. And he's like, okay, okay, all right. Everyone knows you did. I don't yeah. know why you keep denying it to this oh, day. I'm like, shut I up. No, I didn't. Shut up. I, know, that's right. I think they're just holding on to it now because it gets that reaction. Maybe. And why not keep bringing it up? One of many I can get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, anyway, so we did top 10 comebacks. Matt, do you want to start us off? I love it. It's been a year, but this is the show. Yeah. 
Welcome to the show. That's right. We couldn't do this on Collider. I couldn't tell that story. I couldn't tell Dick and Ball's story. All right. So <laughs> you couldn't. Couldn't. And it was like pinched. You know what I mean? In okay. the waistband. All right. Was, that's enough. That's good. That's enough. You sure? <laughs> All right. So for actors and directors on comebacks. Yeah. It's an interesting list. Yeah. Overall. Mm-hmm. Um, Mine is actor heavy. Very actor heavy. I have some directors. You have directors plural. Yes. Okay. Fair. Um, and I almost thought about putting another in. Oh wow! There's going to be. But I, I wanted a more varied list because some of the choices you could leap to. They're like, yeah, but they came back in TV. They mm-hmm. were TV before, mm-hmm. like a Neil Patrick Harris. Yeah, none of mine came back in TV. Uh, Rob Lowe. Well, that's Jason the thing. Bateman. My number ten is the exception to that. Okay, which is Jason Bateman. Oh, I just said it. All right. Yeah, just just because. Yeah, he's also done a bunch of movies. He's been successful. On their own. I think he qualifies here, absolutely. Well, Arrested Development brought him back. Yes, true. That's where it d- kind of disqualifies him. Mm-hmm. Whoa, okay. Well, on some level, just because he went from whatever happened to Jason Bateman to, right. oh, yeah, this guy is great. Yeah. And then in the midst of that, he was doing all these other movies. Right. Uh, and I think like right before that was Dodgeball. Yes. Which he's one of my favorite things in Dodgeball. Okay. Like now when I watch that, there's only key scenes that I still like. Who is he in Dodgeball? He's the color commentary at the Oh, Dodge that's Ball. right. The, yeah, uh, on the Ocho. Really, yeah, exactly. That's right. Just really over the top. And you're like, you know what? That is the one time, like one of the times of this movie where over the top is perfect. Yeah. You did something right there. Him and Gary Cole, that's yeah. right. Yep. Just like in Best in Show. All right, yeah. if you're going to go this crazy on one, I like the choice of the one. <laughs> but Bateman is just like, Bateman was part of my childhood. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, Me too. And in others in these, I'm going to reference specific, like, they came back with this thing. This right. thing brought them back. But his is more of like a, I never, it's one of those, you know, whatever happened to, like a, a Tina Yothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course. I have no idea. I hope she's doing well. That's from, kids, there was a show called Family Ties. The, Tina Yothers played the youngest daughter on Family. Yeah. And there was nothing like anybody in the family. Nope. I still believe it was an affair that Meredith Baxter Bernie had <laughs> with, the, oh, the blonde. with somebody. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's somebody she had an affair with because she looks like nobody else in the family. And I get that there are, you know, redheaded stepchildren, for lack of a better word, uh, in everybody's family. But she so looks like nothing like anybody else that it's ridiculous to believe that she's part of that family naturally. Unless she looks dramatically like somebody's aunt. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Because I've seen that happen. We're just like, oh, wow, you look like my grandpa. Right. You right. don't look like much like your dad, but you look like my grandpa. Right. Kind of thing. Okay. Um. But yeah, any of those people, whereas Bateman, when he came back with Arrested Development and, and Horrible Bosses and yeah. uh, what, The Breakup? Yeah, the uh, yeah, ch- uh, Change Up. The Change Up. Yeah, yeah, where he switches with Ryan Reynolds, which is great. And oh, yeah, that is a good one. That's I forgot about that film, one. That's a good film, man. People don't um, talk about that film enough. That's a good film. Yeah, when he switches up, because, you know, they're basically just doing an impression of the other person yep. on some level. But it works so well. It does. It mm-hmm. works really well. Yep. They have good chemistry between the two of them. Up in the Air is another one that he's mm-hmm. good in. Yeah. He, he came back in a big way. Yeah, Hancock. He's Hancock, one of the things yeah. I like in Hancock. Absolutely. Bad words, he's in it, even if you haven't seen yeah. the Spelling Bee one. That's good. That's his, what, directorial? Did he write yeah. that as well? I think he did write it, yeah. yeah. It's a fun movie. Yep. It is. Agreed. It's it's not a masterpiece, but it was it was never striving to be. It was no, just, no. It wanted to tell a story. Yeah, and it told that story. It's one of those smaller films that does that. Yeah. All right. All right. My next one is yeah. my first director. Okay. Which is Guy Ritchie. Ooh. Go. Okay. Well, just because the time period between Lock, Stock, Snatch is ninety nine two thousand. Yes, true. And then it's not until if you want to give me two thousand eight Rock and Roller, sure. I love that film. So do I. But okay. it's a rehash of the first two that worked for Sure, him. sure. I go a year later, Sherlock. Okay. Because it's, it's different. Okay. He tells an action story, does it really well, uh, takes a character that is well-tread and mm-hmm. gives it a fresh spin. I love the slow down action and whatnot. It still had a very Guy Ritchie feel. Yes. It's like the progression of his style. And mm-hmm. that nine-year time off in between where he's making like swept away. I'm yeah. sorry. And uh, Revolver, which is terrible. Yeah. It's just like, no. Yeah. It, it, you, I guess, needed to keep working and figure out what you're good at this and is what pick happens. up things here and, you know, here and there. Yeah. So to come back with Sherlock, I was like, this thing is awesome. Yeah. Because I've always kind of liked Sherlock. I you like mean the, Sherlock Holmes as a character? Yeah. Okay. I like the potential of the character. I right. never liked the execution that I saw on screen. Okay. Because you're talking about in the running is the great mouse detective. <laughs> That's in the argument for me for my... my fa- until this, one of my That's favorite funny. Sherlock... So it's the God's honest truth. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not a lot. And I so, disagree with you. 
Well, who you got? I love Basil Rathbone in the old Sherlock Holmes movies from the 40s and 50s. I loved the um, the one that was on A&E for a long time that was off the BBC. And then I... Not a movie, though. Not a movie. No, no, no. Oh, oh movie-wise. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah. The, I guess it's the Basil Rathbone is real. And then, like, what's-his-face did the 7% solution or whatever. Uh, Nicole Williamson played Sherlock Holmes in that, and he's uh, Merlin in Excalibur. He did a okay. great Sherlock Holmes. Never that. seen that one. And there's one, the Sherlock Holmes is other brother that Gene Wilder did, or whatever it's called, but that wasn't quite the same thing. Yeah. And I like Without a Clue. I dug that with Michael Caine as Sherlock Holmes and Ben Kingsley as Watson, who's actually the really Sher- uh, the real Sherlock Holmes. But y- your point is valid in terms of the mainstream acceptance of this character. It hadn't been since Basil Rathbone in the 40s and 50s it, that yeah. he came in. To take a character that was at one point very relatable and people yeah. was beloved, yeah. and it crossed an ocean yeah. and managed to make it over here and and you know gain some capital on this side of the pond, yeah. uh, to never really see it fully executed. Now in television format, I think they've done an excellent job. Yeah, absolutely, all over the place. Cumberbatch is great in that. Yeah, yeah, and I even like the Johnny Lee Miller. Oh yeah, Elementary. Yeah, right on. The show in and of itself is a procedural. Yeah. They try and carry through, but I like, I love his take on it, mm-hmm. that he's such a flawed character, that he's a drug addict to basically quiet his mind and went through some terrible things and stuff like that and be right. like, it makes sense to me that this guy with ADD and OCD and a few other things yeah. would be able, not ADD, but that hyper-focused almost probably on the autism spectrum yeah. and offsets it with his drug addiction. You're like, that makes sense. Yeah. That seems like the type of person that would do that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so Guy Ritchie on that... That lapse in between, it was like, you know what? You made such a progression that now I wanted King Arthur to be good. Yeah, I did. It, yeah. uh, I just because I think he has potential as a director. I think that's why I didn't include him, because he, he came back and did some stuff that isn't quite as good. So it's like, okay, so we'll see. The, the jury feels like it's out. If it's, if it's not Sherlock Holmes, the jury feels like it's out. So okay, well, mind. I mean... But I respect the decision, of If course. we did the cutoff at 2012 or whatever, is sure. after the second Sherlock, then yeah. you'd be singing a different tune, which Absolutely. is rightfully so. Because I love Game of Shadows. That's a good sequel. It is. Yep. Uh, oh, what's your number eight? And my number eight might be on your list, so we might have our first punt situation. Whoa. Uh, Drew Barrymore. That is not on my list. Really? Yeah. Just couldn't? I'm just not a fan. I see. I, so to me, the comeback is irrelevant. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's not that she hasn't done good work. I like her in Fifty First Dates, and I like her in a couple other films. Wedding Singer. Uh-huh. But to me, I didn't need her to come back, so that's why I didn't put her on my list. That's oh, just see, me. That's me. To me, I'm more intrigued by the story. Oh, that's fair. Absolutely. Because, well, because we grew up, or at least I grew up with her, yeah. and I was only maybe a couple years older than her when she was in E.T. Yeah, yeah. So as I'm getting a little bit older to read these stories where she's like 12 and out partying all the time, mm-hmm. and you thought her entire life was destroyed, and she comes back in a bit part in Scream. Yeah. And that launches her a bit part. It's yeah. great because it plays against what you assume her character is going to be. Right. And that's why it was so effective. But... That's how much we as a society were like, man, I always liked Drew Barrymore. Yeah. She, she, she seems so nice and amiable, and I'd like to hang out with her. She seems like she'd be fun. Right. So I, had, I was blown away by that because I thought she was gone. I thought she was, a, you know, a Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, yeah. Where That's the fame got to point. her. Yeah, and she just spun out, and eventually she ends up like, you know, one of the Corys. Yeah. Just the 80s kids stars don't really make it out of that phase. It's yeah, very rare. Chew them up and spit them out. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So the fact that she managed to do that and did some good work thereafter and stayed relevant all these years later, mm-hmm. just like that's a hell of a comeback. Because Absolutely. We all kind of, you know, wrote you off. Yeah. Her, I think her biography is called Little Girl Lost or something like that, her autobiography. That was, and I remember when I used to work in bookstores, we would sell out of that thing all the time. People really? loved reading about her story. Yeah, it's mad. It's a hell of a story. Yep. It's Agreed. a hell of a story. Agreed. And so she did great work in all these other films coming out. You're right. She's, you know, I, I, I don't know that she's... I don't know that she's always consistently good, but no. in the stuff that works for her, she's actually with the Charlie's Angel stuff. She's great in the Charlie's Angel stuff. So, yeah, that's a val- it's a it's a great choice. All right, what do you got at ten? Uh, all right, so I'm going to start off with my, is my only director on the list, uh, and it's uh, M Night Shyamalan for Split. I think okay. I think coming out of uh, the Sixth Sense, coming out of Unbreakable, which I love to pieces now. You know, and I I like the village. I still think the village is watchable. I think there are scenes in Lady in the Water that are watchable, but then he completely falls off the um, 
the the radar man and does some crappy film the happening all this stuff that he Shit. did yeah but i like signs better than I like lady in the water yeah signs is good signs is great yeah maybe once, even village too that that four the four film run was nice but lady in the water is when he started kind of falling off and then the happening and then all these other yeah. things and so it, the the devil one which i thought was terrible oh that was from the night from the mind from of. the mind Fine, from the mind of Well, it just Shyamalan. means he pitched an idea and they went, okay, we're going to have somebody else write the story and direct it and, and produce. That's right. And then uh, Last Airbender, which was really fucking terrible that he did, or Avatar Last Airbender, whatever it was. Yeah. So all of it was just terrible. And uh, when he, uh, and they, he did some some other movie about the grandparents or what, and I just think that he didn't quite get there in any of these movies. And he, I thought he was done. I was shocked that people kept giving him opportunities. I was like, why mm-hmm. do people keep giving you opportunities? I don't get it. It's been 10, 15 years since you've done a decent film. And then, boom, uh, Split comes out. I read all these reviews, you know, Perry over at Collider and and uh, a couple other people told me how much they enjoyed the movie. And they said, stick around for the twist at the end. And so, uh, I had no idea that this film was about was related to, and this is spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen it, I haven't seen it. All right, well then I'm not going to say. Yeah, but it relates to uh, some of his earlier work, and in that way, I think I already really know fantastic. it. But at the same time, why? Yeah. why reinforce? But the film itself is really, really well done, and I don't usually like torture films. I really think those are people working out their own fucking interests in seeing women being tortured or beaten or sexually abused, and that they don't want to admit that they have issues. They they want to see that kind of shit. It bothers me because like whenever I see. Eli, Eli Roth stuff I'm like fuck you man I, I hate that shit you're just you're just doing it to jack off to it and I just hate it and so but when it's done really well like something like Split where it's an equal playing field yeah. then I'm down like then I'm down because it's about a psychological battle more than it is about you getting off physical on domination one, yeah physical domination or you getting off on watching a young woman uh, being a, it, stripped down to her panties or being abused or being tortured physically like all that shit drives me insane mm-hmm. if it's not done well so uh, he came back with Split and Split was great and so such great direction, pacing in the movie, and the acting uh, was just off the charts um, with what uh, uh, James McAvoy was doing and all these different characters. So okay. to me, I think you can't do that without a good director like M. Knight. All right, so my number nine, then, and this becomes my string of actors to the end here, is Pam Greer and Jackie Brown. Okay. Is that on your list at all? It, it, it's no, I okay. did because after that... Pam Greer never really popped off again. Yeah, but for me, for, for me, I put it on the list because I'm like, and it's lower on the list because she had come out of those '70s exploitation films. You know, yeah. she, she she had some kind of name, but she hadn't really done anything kind of hardcore mainstream, right? So she'd done and appeared, in, but then like for decades, you didn't hear from her. And really, that film, Jackie Brown, like brought Robert Forster back too, who yeah. did some nice work afterwards, especially in The Descendants as uh, uh, the woman's dad. Um, uh, Clooney's wife's dad but like in this I, I thought when she came back at Jackie Brown to come back as such a confident lead mm-hmm. handle Tarantino's dialogue really carry the movie be a love interest you know do all these things that she was doing in the movie to show that this is a legitimate actress and she stood yeah. for so many of those 70s actors in these black exploitation films that took the work because that's all they could really get in Hollywood yeah you gotta you pay know? the bills exactly you gotta pay the bills and they did their and some of these are legends for a reason cult classics for a reason like Coffee Superfly you know Shaft obviously these are all legendary films uh, cult classic legendary films and of course uh, Pam was in Foxy Brown and that's Mm -hmm. the really huge one and so to have her come back and do another version of Fox uh, Jackie rather do Jackie Brown um, I just thought it was great to see her blow up and do that you know it was I just expected her yeah to to keep going wow she is great and she's still she's still got it after all these years yeah it was great to see that Uh, so then my number eight and this might be on your list higher so we might have to punt uh, Jackie Earl Haley no, that's a good call, though. Wow, what didn't make your list? Uh, you know what? I <laughs> slipped my mind. Okay, because we literally—I mean, the poll just ended yeah, not long yeah, ago, yeah. and we've both been busy. And just like I can only—I went through this and I made a list. Yeah, I—I I omitted him. No worries, man. Okay, so that's my number eight because I mean, people remember him with Bad News Bears, yeah. obviously. And I think there was a couple other films. I think he was in Little Foxes or something like that. And I just know him as Bad News Bears. Yeah, Bad News Bears. That's and it. People, people thought he was so great, and people loved that movie so much. And then he kind of slid into obscurity. I don't know if it was drugs. I don't know if it's just like not being able to find work uh, or whatever. I think he was a pizza delivery guy for a, uh, at some point for a while. And so there was all kinds of things. And then all of a sudden he comes back in uh, Little Children mm-hmm. playing that child sexual predator, uh, which was 
really unsettling to see him play that part. And then in Watchmen, really, with Rorschach. Yeah. And so, to me, those were just amazing comeback roles. And I guess you make a great point, Matt. Do they stick around for a while? And just like I said about Guy Ritchie, well, then he did a King Arthur thing. But I think it still matters to come back. I think there's something no, about it to be the, I like back. the pick. Yeah. It's yeah. Really like when you said it, like he didn't even make my side list because yeah. I just, I forgot. Right. Uh yeah, there's a guy that I, uh, you know, because Bad News Bears came out before I was born. Mm. So I saw it, I don't know, like well after it had been around for a while and I'd right. heard of it. And then I eventually saw it, but I was still young. Yeah. So he is encapsulated as that. And I don't remember him anything else until, what, early 2000s. Yeah. When he came back and you're like, oh shit, that guy from Bad News Bears? Right. And now he plays, he's really okay with playing like some skeevy characters. Yeah, yeah. And he does a great job doing it. He does. It. And he brings nice complexity and layers to the work when he does but that kind of stuff. Even other things. He's in Lincoln and he's great yeah. in that. Oh, he's great in Lincoln. Uh, I and, like his Kruger. Yeah, I was going to say, Freddy Kruger, he was great in his yeah, uh, remake of Freddy Kruger. He's one of those of, he's always solid. Yeah. I yeah. wonder why that was just because he was Jack Earl Haley that he just couldn't get the work yeah. in the interim. Yeah, or sometimes it's just not the right time for you, man, yeah. which is why this business is so tough on people because all of a sudden, 20 years later, you blow up and you're like, why the, why the fuck couldn't I have blown up when I was younger, when I had more energy, when I would want to do more projects? But you just got to take it when it happens for you, man. And yeah. so I'm just happy it did because his Rorschach is one of my favorite parts of that movie and I really didn't know if they could get Rorschach right and his performance as Rorschach really does help the move, elevate the movie from yeah. just a B movie uh, type I of I love any movie. scene he's in. Yeah. Absolutely. It's my he is my favorite character in the movie, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Just he is done so well, like captured from the essence of it from the comics. Yeah, and his voiceover is just graphic great. novel. Yeah, the graphic novel, right. And his voiceover is so great in this too. Yeah. That gravelly yeah. It's just so thick and you're like, Man, you can feel crime. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. The way he That's... says it, you're like, Man, your life is just rough. <laughs> Comedian, what a joke! Uh, all right, those are my uh, bottom three. What's your number seven, son? Uh, my number seven is Joaquin. Did okay, you make your list? No, didn't? No, just because I thought that meltdown was real. Oh yeah, with uh, that documentary. He yeah, did? yeah, with and Casey? he disappeared for like five, six years. Yeah, yeah, he didn't do a damn thing. Right, and then all of a sudden he pops up, and you're like, "Who's the homeless like roadie for Black Crows?" And he's like, and then it ends up like he was trying to put one over, and he was just at a weird, like, abstract place, it seems. Yeah. Like, as another adult looking at that and be like, I, that's how did you lead up to that choice? Yeah. Like, you're just so sick of fame and whatnot, and now you're going to play a joke on the idea of fame. And right. That is a weird mental place to be in. Yeah, agreed. But it's one he obviously exists in, and so do a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. Like, eventually, the, the character of the celebrity, they have to either choose to embody it or they play it. Right. And I've seen both sides of that, and they're like, man, that is a strange expectation on somebody. It puts you into a weird place. So I thought he was gone. Yeah. And he comes back in The Master, which I know we both feel is an underrated, just classic. Yep. And the people that don't get it, you can go fuck yourself. Oh, there you go. That thing is <laughs> gorgeous. Yeah. Let it take its time. Get into this weird story. Yeah. Set up these eccentric characters that you've never met in your life, but are based on real individuals. Yeah. And just allow the craziness to wash over you. Did he, did did walk the line? Was that his comeback to win the Oscar or to that was what right? that led him to the Oscar? And then his interim is in between that and Master. I think oh, it's like, is it really? I think it's like five six years. Okay, that's a good point. Where he may have done maybe one film or something. Yeah, but the, like, there's a dead zone where you're like, this guy's got something because from Gladiator, man, Gladiator, he just plays a guy oh, that you want to yeah. you want to punch. He's he has so a punchable great. face. Yeah. It's one of those of like, I don't like you. And then the fact that he's now grown to, man, that guy's good in her. Yeah. And he's good in just anything he's in for the most part. He's always excellent. This is a great point you bring up, Matt. Yeah. I mean, we own the night. Not eh, that great. Reservation no. Road, not that great. Two Lovers, not that great. Yeah, I'm still here. That was that documentary that he did. Yeah. And then The Master in 2012, he comes back with. He's great in her. You're right, in 2013. And people loved him in Inherent Vice. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of that movie, but he did great work in that movie. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it's a great point, man. He spent a lot of years away before he finally came back. And who knows? I mean, actors are weird, dude. They're always processing shit and going through stuff. So, you know. Yeah. Any, any entertainer is. Yeah, true. You're actively searching for the approval of strangers. <laughs> It's ridiculous. Just like we are, damn it. Yep. Listen to the top ten. Welcome to, yeah. <laughs> Too narcissistic. How as dare it, you? As, I mean, not true narcissism. Right. Neither of us. It would be the Matt Nost show by itself or yeah, the John well, Roca show by itself. As another, you know, comic I know phrases it, you know, basically it's all ego with no self-esteem. That's yeah. Hollywood. <laughs>
That's you're great. like, yeah, that's true. That'll it's true. It. It's a guy that's been around since the 70s, the heyday of the comedy stories. Right on. Yeah, joke I've heard him tell me, like, that's still fucking true. <laughs> All these years later, that's still a good joke. Right. What's your number six? Uh, my number six, I'm, he didn't make your list. Clint Eastwood. Did not make my list. Holy shit. Well, the reason being. Wow, really? I've always felt he was in like public consciousness all this time. Oh. True. But as a director. Oh, okay. We're going Unforgiven in 92. Yes. And then it's 11, 12 years before he makes another movie we all agree is amazing. Which is Million Dollar Baby? Mystic. Mystic River. Which I'm, I think it's okay. I think it's okay too. Yeah, the year it came out, well, people were like, this should win the Oscar. I, I was like, know. it's a good film. It's a decent film. I didn't think it should win the Oscar. I, and I don't think Sean Penn should but have won the Oscar. Million Dollar Baby the next year. Yeah. And that's when, the one. Yeah, back in the day when we did a boxing, I hadn't seen it. So I watched it for that week's show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I can't believe I avoided this for this long because I like everything else he's put out since yep. then. Yeah. Um, and it was just like all these years later, I actually learned, uh, you know, one thing about boxing I didn't know just from he was teaching her technique. And I right. was like, OK, I did not know that. Yeah. There's a little factoid for you. But that 10, 11 years would be like, so it was unforgiven, like because he did so many cowboy films. He knew that role so well and yeah. he held on to the script, the rights to it for 10 years. Yeah. And was like, I, I just need to be old enough to do this. And just that was his crescendo as a director. That's fine. Yeah. It's my favorite Western. Yeah. Uh, so that 11, would he ever get back? And he has. And since then, he's just been, you know, punching away Mm -hmm. every, almost every time he comes out with something, you know, letters for Iwo Jima. Yeah. Great film. Great film. I like Bridges of Madison County. I like this stuff. See, that's in that interim that you just didn't dig. I don't mind, uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Oh God. Okay. See, I don't mind that Yeah. just because it's set in New Orleans. Yeah. It's the only reason th- that kind of thing could ever exist to me, like these types of characters floating in and out of each other's lives. Sometimes I think New Orleans exists, so people put New Orleans in the movies so their yep. actors can act all stupid and weird. That's the way it is in my head. it's New Orleans, you yeah. know? It's the way it is in my head. Yeah, yeah. Although I got family in Baton Rouge, so... Baton Rouge. It's not like New Orleans, but there are some characters. <laughs> I'm sure. I got to assume that New Orleans has their characters as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, that was your number six? Uh, that was my number six. Okay, my number seven is Jennifer Connelly. Not on my list. Wow, really? Not on my list. Dude, she does Labyrinth and whoo, falls off the face of the earth. I mean, if you want to throw Rocketeer in there, go ahead. I just, I don't understand people's I, love I, for that movie. I, I guess I never thought she fell off. Yeah, really? Well, just because, I, I, I don't know. Can she you was... name any of the films since Labyrinth until you get to like House of Sand and Fog and Requiem for a Dream? Those are, There's like nothing. That, that's the thing, though. I saw Labyrinth when I was the right age to see Labyrinth, and gotcha. then she didn't make another movie that was right for my age until those movies came <laughs> That's out. What I was saying. So she was in my head, like still making movies. I just didn't see them, <laughs> and then she came out with something. I saw them. She like she's still good. She still got I it. She still got it. No, but I would argue. I that, get it. I would argue that she wasn't. Uh, yeah, because she did Mulholland Falls, or like she's. I think she changed as an actress, uh, as a person, as a woman, all of that. Um, from what she did in Labyrinth, because I thought she was just another pretty face in the Labyrinth and then all these other films. Like, she's just another pretty face. I didn't think her work was anything to speak of. And then when she came back with Wrecking for a Dream, I was like, now that's an actress. There oh, yeah. was so much power in her performance, so much vulnerability, so much complexity. And I was like, this is an actress. Everything you do before these romantic comedies or stupid little middling films, they don't quite get there. Mm-hmm. But she brought it with that. And then especially House of Sand and Fog, which is one of my favorite just break your fucking heart movies. And she's so uh, uh, incredible in that film and desperate and, and fighting for her life as a former addict and trying to reclaim something of hers that yeah. she needs to give her stability in this world that she had just lost her mother and trying to figure out where to put the tent poles in the ground. And the ground keeps, you know, being, uh, oh, the ground keeps, uh, it's like the ground keeps uh, I don't shifting. Know, shifting, right, exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. And it's like building a sandcastle and thinking it'll stay erect for more than five minutes. Like it's just that kind of thing in her life. And she does such a great job moving through these situations and lets you connect with someone you wouldn't connect with normally because she's doing these self destructive things in her life. Yeah. Which is just trying to find some stability. And she does such great work in those films. And subsequently, all the, even that uh, Dark Water film, which a lot of people don't like, that remake of a Japanese horror film, I thought she was great in carrying that film. And uh, to see her now, Oh, sure. Beautiful Mind. Yeah, Beautiful Mind. Great stuff in Beautiful Mind. Yeah. yeah I wish she had had more. Yep. I mean, I understand why you couldn't because you Agreed. need to focus on this other guy. Right. Who had a hell of a story. Yeah. But her story to have to live with that madness. Yeah. And I love the fact that she is now the voice in Spider Man Homecoming. She's the voice of the yeah. suit that uh, Spidey has. And she's married to Paul Bettany, who was the voice of Iron Man's suit in the first uh, couple of Iron Man's before oh. he became Vision. Exactly. It's all connected. He upgraded. Man. 
He upgraded. That's right. He upgraded. Maybe she gets upgraded too. <laughs> I don't know. Can we have two of those in the same universe? That would be nice. Yeah, it depends on what she would become. That's true. Uh, all right. So then, my number six, speaking of Spider-Man: Homecoming, is Michael Keaton. Uh oh! What a great call. <laughs> I never really thought about it like that because he's so. Yeah. Wow, what a great call. Yeah, I mean, because we saw him in Batman. Look, he's Batman making the list. I'm not going to fight yeah, you. Yeah, okay. Should be, he should be right about there on my list. Yeah. And, you know, he had all those years where he kind of disappeared. We, he did. Oh, everybody loved him. Everybody yeah. still loved Michael Keaton from his 80s movies into the Batman stuff. But he was doing, like, straight-to-DVD movies. He was doing that Game 6 movie. He was doing all these movies that, like, really didn't have much in the public consciousness. Well, I, I think it's a function of he turned down the third Batman. Yes, he did. Even though they offered him... You know, money that that most actors didn't see until the late '90s, early 2000s. Right, like he got offered a huge chunk of money, and he was like, "I don't want to do it." And it it seemed to be like he was just picking specific projects, like Jack Frost. Well, maybe he got to take his family to Sun Valley or wherever that was shot, (laughs) and they got to live there for six weeks. Yeah, like almost the Michael Caine of "I'll do whatever Jaws you want as long as you're willing to put me up in the Bahamas for three months, exactly for free." Yeah, and fly me first class and pay me on top of that. I'll come make your shit movie. Maybe yeah. just do that. It's like I made enough money. Why not just do jobs as I, I so choose? Yeah, you're right though. I mean, he was a te- he, he wasn't the most he wasn't the easiest guy to have on set. There are plenty of stories about that. So maybe that guy. I think that always plays into the comeback with a lot. Not always, but I think a lot of the times it does play into these things with these actors as they become so uh, they're young and they buy their press and they're in their hu- mm-hmm. they're in the height of their hubris. And it ends up coming to bite them in the ass because no one's replaceable in this city, in this town, rather. No one's replaceable. Everyone, you can always uh, destroy someone's career and have them like grovel for a while before they come back. But the fans always love them. No yep. different than us, right? People commenting for months and months, even the show, even after the show had gone off the air, people commenting months and months to bring us back. And so that's the way when the fans Ho- want something. Hopefully this like first one isn't our Jack Frost. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? No, we'll come isn't. back in rusty as shit. <laughs> like, all right, we'll get into it. We'll get into Give it. A little bit of talk. Uh, yeah. So, and I love him coming back in Birdman. That's the one he came back with, and he was just oh, yeah. so great in Birdman. And you know, Spotlight and yeah, uh, Spotlight the Founder. Yeah, the Founder, which is great. If you haven't seen, yeah, he's that. excellent in it. Yeah, the film itself doesn't 100 percent get there for me, but I think he's fantastic in the film. I just think it's the journey of the character is yeah. going to be ultimately unfulfilling. Yes, um, but it's still an interesting character study. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I'm Absolutely. surprised it didn't get put out uh, in time for Oscar just because of his performance. Yeah. It was yeah, never... It was weird. Yeah, it's, it's that's what they're holding it for. When it got released yeah. and announced, like, oh, Keaton, now this time of year, if it's going to be a December release, yeah. we're talking Oscar, this should be good. Right. And it's it's like so many things should kill a man's career. Beetlejuice should kill an actor's career. Right. It's such an over-the-top, oh, okay, well, this guy can clearly only play this type of character. Right. And you're like, no, no, no. Then he does... Uh, Mr. Mom yes. and Gung Ho. Gung yeah. Ho, I love. People love Gung Ho. I love Gung Ho. Yep. And the fact that I don't have him on my list is an absolute crime. <laughs> it is. You're right. Well, and I'm actually, put him on there. yeah, he would probably he would crack my top five. Yeah, Mr. Mom is great. I love Mr. Yeah. Mom to pieces. That was a staple in the Roca house. You got Night Shift. Night Shift is so good. It's just like Michael Keaton is yeah. awesome. And people out there, you only know like bits and pieces where he was Batman. Go back and see some of his other stuff. Because yep. like the likability in Gung Ho mm-hmm. and his comedic performance in Night Shift and you know, yeah. Mr. Mom, yeah. it's a nice blend of all of that different stuff. I would even throw multiplicity in there. I thought he was great yeah. multiplicity. He's charming. He's very charming in that food. And that's he doesn't get a chance to do those uh, kind no. of parts much. And when he does, he really shines. I think yeah. it's the eyebrows. Yeah, it's too menacing. The, I think it's the... It's the yeah, it's, it is. It's that, the edge, like yeah. the whole... He has that Michael Keaton moment in Spider-Man Homecoming. He has that oh, one yeah. moment when he's going at the guy, I don't want you to do those kinds of things anymore. It's just so great. Um, all right, so what's your number five, brother? Uh, my number five... Uh, well, it... it probably should be just the man we mentioned and I'm bumped off jason bateman off my list <laughs> my number five is mickey rourke oh, okay that's my number four so let's talk about it yeah, definitely yeah he was flirting with my number four yeah uh just because there's a dude um he was making movies that when i was young enough i wasn't allowed to see yeah but he was like you know before tmz before perez hilton or whatnot mm-hmm. this dude was on every magazine cover and I knew as a kid that this guy slings. Yeah. I could just tell as like a 10 year old because every story was basically he was a Lothario and he's the next Brando and he's just, he's selling sex and machismo mm-hmm. and coming through and be like, <laughs> I haven't seen him his movies, but this dude must be, you know, fantastic. Yeah. And then he decides to get into boxing 
and ruin his face. Yeah. Like, wh- what? What are you doing? Yeah, Mickey so Rourke is weird. now? Yeah. This like, is also in People, and there's pictures of him in a boxing ring in, yeah. like, Queens or something. It's like, you're not even, if this isn't even the garden or something, like you're <laughs> the first undercard of a five bout, of like five match bout something. In Cleveland at a yeah, bar. Yeah, give me something. <laughs> and just like, what is, what is Mickey Rourke doing? He comes back with the wrestler yeah. and you're like, fucking Christ, this guy. Yeah. Just gives a performance that's almost autobiographical. Yeah. Where he was at a height and just fell off for various reasons mm-hmm. and he just wants to get back one last time. Yep. And I, st- I still think it's one of the Oscar fucking crimes that he didn't win the, the actor that year. He didn't win the best actor that year. No offense to Sean Penn winning it for Milk. No fucking way, man. But what, 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 what nah. Mickey is doing, what Mickey is doing is on a whole nother level. Look, I love what Sean Penn, I, I actually think Sean Penn did better work in Milk than he does in Mystic River. I bought him more in Milk than I do in Mystic River. But I think what, what uh, Mickey Rourke does in the wrestler is on a whole nother level man that's like so stripping I. your heart fucking bare and putting it out there and sh- and letting people into you and l- and making it believable and not make it seem like he's kissing his own ass or being narcissistic it makes you feel like you are walking into this dude's pain and you are s- and putting 100%. up shop 100 yeah. percent. like the scenes with todd berry Ugh. when todd berry somehow has the upper hand yeah and you're looking at this from like a societal perspective yeah. and you're like this feeble man now has dominion on some level yeah. over is you know now has been but this big bulked up guy but he's a shell of himself yeah. he has no self esteem that's gone ego is gone he's living yeah. his you know his car park. yeah, yeah. his car yeah it's just like this pathetic character and you do you 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 want him to succeed yeah so you're like ah uh, you know what life sucks life's hard enough mm-hmm. give this guy a second chance yeah that's all we want and it's and it's the it's you're like you said um, uh, Matt, it mirrors real life for him because i mean he draw i mean i love his early like Rumblefish. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, uh, well, you got, uh, was it nine and a half weeks? Nine what and a half it? weeks, right? I, uh, to me, I always um, pitch Year of the Dragon. Diner? He was in Diner. He's in Diner. Year of the Dragon is one that I yeah. always push. Him and John Lone are fantastic in that damn movie. If you've never seen Year of the Dragon, do yourself a favor and rent that 80s movie. It'll fucking knock your socks yeah. off. He should have had Sean Penn's career. Yes. Like a, a mirroring Absolutely. Sean Penn's career. He Pope does one. Green. He does like... You know the, how Jordan supposedly retired because he didn't yeah. have a rival to compare yeah. himself to. Yeah, like they could have been the rivals, the Magic and Bird. Absolutely, they just keep pushing each other because they were the, basically the same guy on some level yeah. of movies. Even Pope of Greenwich Village, those are great movies from back yeah. then. And then he just kind of dropped off, and like you say, he was doing straight to DVD stuff. And then comes back the wrestler, comes back with Sin City. And even though you may not like Iron Man two. I, I like him chewing the scenery in Iron Man 2. I like yeah. him in The Immortals chewing the scenery because he's the reason he's number uh, four for me is because I enjoy, uh, I just enjoy him more than the other uh, six people on my list. I just, I'm, I champion him more. I, it's a personal list. I just okay. love him to death. Yeah. That's why. I, I yeah. put Keaton over him. Yeah. And, but that's just me. Okay. That was your number five. Yeah. And that was your four. So what's your five? Uh, my five is Matthew McConaughey. Okay, see, he never went away to me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I like some of those movies in the middle. Like, I like Amistad. Right, but did you like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days? Did you like... Um... No, but I didn't mind the Newton Boys. Oh, man. I didn't hate it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's basically just a bunch of young actors and who's got the most charm and who's going to make it out of this bunch. And of course he okay. did. It's what, him, Skeet Ulrich yeah. or something. And, Isn't uh, D'Onofrio in that one too or no? Uh, I don't think D'Onofrio's in that one. Who's the third in Is, that? Uh, it's like a Hawk? Shia LaBeouf Is type Ethan of character. Is in there? Maybe. That oh. sounds right. Wait, but it's I'm a bunch of young guys in there that's like none of them can A-line a movie. Right. So th- you can all see the potential they have. Right. And that's what I like about it too. You're like, oh, here's or, you know flashes of what he's able to do later. That's because, you know, McConaughey, and you're right, man. When he came back, and it was mainly uh, the TV show that got him. Yeah. That's what launched him into. Yeah, True Detective. Yeah. Yeah. yeah into yeah. us going, dude, this guy. Where's yeah. this guy been? Which I finally watched for the first time a few months ago. Are you serious? I've never seen it. Dude, his performance oh, is man. one of the best performances in television history. I agree. Rust history. Cole is, is a, one of the best characters in yes. this period. And he's not taking it away from, like, Woody Harrelson's no, great. No, Woody's great, too. And, 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 but there's, plus the stylistic choices yeah. of it, like that, the, the, when he goes down into the kind of South Central-ish area, yeah. and it's one long tracking shot, gorgeous. Yep. Gorgeous. Yeah, and I had seen the second season first. Ooh. So I was like, ah, oh, okay. Oh no! But people, were, yeah, but people were like, you've got to do it. So my friend at work, he was like, he brought in the DVDs and said, or the Blu-rays rather, the collection. He goes, you're going to watch this, and I want to hear from you in a week after you watch it. And I was yeah. like, damn. So I had no choice. That sucks. You saw two before one. Yeah. Thankfully, they're completely different. But I have a better experience because I don't have it ruined by season two. 
I didn't even make it through season two. Yeah, you're I probably, couldn't because I was smart. like, no, nope, I'm just. I made it through. I think three or four episodes. Dude, I was right. D'Onofrio is in it, and Ethan. D'Onof- Hawk. D'Onofrio yeah. is in it. Wow, yeah, new boys. Forgot. So that's what I'm talking about. Contact, Amistad, Contact, Time I to like. Kill. Those are good. Those Time are to Kill, good. I like. But those are from late 90s. That's what I'm saying. And then he just fucking disappears with an Ed TV in Sahara 99. I like. U571. U571's then, okay. Then he does The Wedding Planner. Then he does Reign of Fire, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Reign of Fire, for some reason, I kind of enjoy. Oh, God damn it. Madness. I just like his character. God damn it. Madness. I see I like McConaughey. <laughs> That's why I never went away for you. Yes. Yeah, that's fair. I would still watch the crap he was in and be like, I still like this guy. Ugh. I find him charming. Two for the money. That was terrible. Sahara was it terrible. Was two for the money, the betting one with Pacino? Yes. It's not bad. Failure to launch. <laughs> <laughs> you're, so, you're so crazy. It's him and Pacino. Oh. Both like hamming it up. It's, but it's pretty terrible. Fantastic. gold. These are terrible. Yeah, Ghost of Girlfriend's past. Saw. But he comes back with Killer Joe. That's the one he comes back. Okay. That R-rated, or, uh, unrated crazy one. And then he does a Lincoln Laura, which Lincoln Lawyer, which I enjoy. Joy, then he does excellent. Mud, and then he Mud does is good. Dallas Buyers Club, and that's the one because he wins the Oscar for uh, he wins the Oscar for that, and then just now he does these really important, See, powerful films. I think he wins the Oscar because True Detective came out months before no, the you're Oscar right. voting. You're probably right, and everybody was talking about, dude, that performance was so good. Yeah. It should be up for an Oscar. That's why I'll always claim that Norbit killed Eddie Murphy's chances of winning the Oscar for Dreamgirls. Really? All these years yeah. later? I still think it was. No, it was the same year. It came out right before. It, it came out a few months. It came Shut out three up. or four months before. It came out three months before the Oscars happened, but it was in the same year as Dreamgirls. Well, in my head, those things are spaced apart by like five years. <laughs> yeah, but they're not <laughs> in real life. Wow. <laughs> All right. So what's your number three? Uh, my number oh, three. Number, what's your number four, rather? Oh, right. yeah. My number uh, four is not going to make your list. Oh. Directorial. Okay. Mel Gibson. Hacksaw. That's a fair... It's been since Apocalypto, which I liked, but nobody saw because it was after Passion of the Christ, and I he fucking, went off the looty bin. Brother, I fucking love Apocalypto. So do I. It's such a great action it's film. It's a taut, yeah, right? interesting... I don't know how true to the like how much backstory I mean, he did. Who, who could like who could disprove? But at the same time, right. like he shot on location yeah, he with did. indigenous people. Yeah. And he you know, knowing the care that he put into Passion of the Christ, it looked like he poured it into that. Yeah. You're like the amount of detail, it seems very real. And plus at the end, man, <sighs> just a great single shot when he's on that cliff, I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. And and it just like yep. Yep, you've been living through hell. Yep. You thought. Now you thought, right? You exactly. Thought. Exactly. You're like, oh, and they just start thinking about the historical perspectives Such of that. Such a ballsy ending, man. There's yeah. a good book called 1491. Okay. And it's basically like what, what North America was like before white people got here. Right. And brought, and, you know, all the diseases and all Diseases yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And like what the, you know, trying to speculate, figure right. out what societies were like here and how big were they. And, right. You know, how much advancement it was and, and what, upon our arrival, you just. They were built for stuff like ticks and lice because they don't live as as closely together. Right. And we're bringing viruses which they have no immunity for. Yeah, but that's the ridiculous nature of that. The narrative that was like, oh, they were all just like wandering around, you know, uncivilized savages. Bullshit. They'd established their own civil- version yeah, of civilization, their version. Own version of culture. Yeah, it was just different from ours. Exactly. Yeah, it wasn't as advanced in most aspects. Yeah, but. But the calendars still whoop ours. Right. For you know centuries thereafter. And advancement doesn't necessarily mean better. Yeah. Uh, that was your number four? Yeah, just because Gibson, okay. I mean, taking that time off and coming back and the fact that everybody had kind of yeah, written him off. And by was, his own doing. Yeah, but yeah. he was never going to be in Oscar conversation anymore. No, right, because of everything he'd done. Yeah, because basically he just went off and said some yeah. despicable things mm-hmm. while he was all wasted. And then the phone calls came out, like the <sighs> voicemails. Yeah, dude. And, but, voicemails. Yeah, but by all accounts, apparently she was a wackadoo herself. Yes, agreed. They're both nuts. Yeah, that's why they were drawn to each Listen, other. We need to destroy this narrative that anytime a uh, the, the 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 relationship situation is involved, you guys know you've been in relationships. It can it can be a lot of shit can get misconstrued. It can oh, go yeah. both ways. So oh, yeah. this whole idea where one person is the angel and the other person is the victim, no. constantly of the no. same gender. Life's, or whatever, it's life's gray. Yeah, life is gray. Plus. Uh, we're old enough. I we both, I'm sure, have friends where they just date crazy people. Yeah, which Male means or they're crazy. Male or female, it's yeah. irrelevant, right? It goes both ways. But yeah. I know more guys that just like keep glomming on to crazy girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, well, guess what, man? You're just as Looney Tunes as they are. Yeah, exactly. There's a reason you keep that you keep finding a good pair yeah, that man. lasts however long it lasts. Mm-hmm. But 
that, you that, thrive on this just as well as she does. Brother, that was a therapy I had to go through last year for four months into into February of this year, man, because I was picking these girls that were either unavailable or were nutty or were like uh, hot and cold all the time. Yeah. All the way back for like years, man. And so I had to confront that shit to go like, hey, motherfucker, you're the common denominator. Common denominator. Hate to break it to you. You want to play victim all the time. You want to play like you're the great guy and they just can't discover what you're all about. Bullshit. You are picking these women mm-hmm. that purposely treat you this way. Good for you. Yeah. And I had to be like, if I'm going to if I'm going to do this, go forward, I got to fix this shit because I'm not going to be happy until I fix this shit. The worst I is when can't you keep repeating it. When you have that moment. And, yeah. But subconsciously, you're telling yourself you knew that the whole time. Yes, that is the worst. That's moment. the worst. When you're like, I'm finally admitting this to myself. But the other part of your brain is like, you motherfucker. You, you knew this. Yeah. Trust me. We had this thought a long time ago. <laughs> You've just been holding it down and stifling that. That's when that Kevin Spacey gift from Casa Card shows up and it just yeah. looks at you exactly. and then looks away. Breaks the fourth wall and be yeah. like, this son of a bitch right here thinks he's pulling a fast one. Like, no, he's not. It's true. But but thank God I climbed out of that shit. Oh, my God. Um, so that was your number, what, four? That was my four, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, so, so my then, three then. Oh, yeah, your three, yeah. Is uh, Ben Affleck. That's my number three. Perfect time. Nailed it. I think we have the same top three. Come on. <laughs> I think <laughs> with that alone, do. I Ooh, think we do. I don't know if we do. We'll see. It might be a different order. but Yeah, it might be a different same. order. But yeah, all right. Um, I have no directors in there, so hopefully you don't either. Listen, why tip the list before we get to it? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Go ahead. Affleck, Affleck was Benifer. Uh Affleck was Geely. Geely. Ugh, Jersey girl. He was he was the lesser of him and Damon. Yeah. He was like, oh, that's the guy that glommed on, and now he's got a Hollywood career, even though he'd been working long before he met Matt Damon, yep. doing tons of stuff on like Boston television yeah. and early children's work stop, workshop stuff. Yeah. He's, he's probably been working since he was like 10 years old. Yeah. He's been putting in the time. Mm-hmm. He just... Kept picking weird movies, I yes. guess. Yes, yeah. Well, like you know, like you said, like I was saying, or rather, like I was saying earlier, hubris, man. It's just that whole thing. You just you're just making all this money. You're dating all these girls, mm-hmm. doing all your things. You're like, fuck it. Everything I touch is gold. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this. And you get involved with Jennifer Lopez. Hey, listen, Lopez Can't blame is, him. Lopez is is a, is a whole other uh, 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 can of worms that you are opening yourself up to. That woman is driven Dude. and she wants that fame and she desires it and she will use you as a prop in her world to get her fame. But at the same time, and you let yourself do it. It was Jennifer Lopez at the height. Yeah, exactly. That's Jennifer what I'm saying. Lopez. Right, right, exactly. But she eclipsed him. Yeah. She eclipsed him. Jennifer Lopez was basically the embodiment of beauty in yeah. the world mm-hmm. for, what do you think, three years solid? Yeah, about three years, 97 to 2000, I would say, yeah. Yeah, where she was number one. Yep. She was like, it was an easy discussion of, eventually you'll find a dissenter, but if you're like, who's the hottest of them all? Right. Jennifer Lopez. Right I mean, now. you're so hot that people get let you get away with tech, uh, with mechanical singing. People let you get away with like... Uh, all this kind of stuff because you because you're so hot. You're so hot that. <laughs> <laughs> How hot is she? No. Matt and Trey from South Park show up to the Oscars. Yeah, two three years later, and wear the dress you yeah. wore. Who is it? Is it? Uh, it's Trey that does wear the dress you wore from the F- MTV Movie Awards yeah, or something. Yeah, it was, it was years later, and we all knew exactly what that dress was. Yep. Whereas Matt, we had to be told, oh, that's so-and-so's dress from this. Right. Whereas hers was, she looked so stunning in that dress, it was just emblazoned into our memories. Mm-hmm. I still remember that dress. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he was he was lost, man. We were like, oh, he was... He's none done. Was, no one was going to his movies. Everyone thought it was... Jo- and then, boom, he comes back with... Gone Baby Gone. Gone Baby directing it. Directing his brother. Who, yeah. Who I would argue is a better actor than Ben, top to bottom, but... Ben has the movie star presence. That's the difference. Oh, yeah. And, and the looks. And the looks, exactly. Nothing exactly. is Casey, but... No, no, no. And, yeah. But Casey's... Casey looks more like me than actor. I look like Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> that's... That God's almost true. Hey, you know, Nailed it! That's... Uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate when you realize... <laughs> It's great in in comic yeah. world. I'm I'm a good looking guy. Yeah, I am for comics. Totally. Yeah, totally. If you ever been in a room full of actors, you're like, man. <laughs> I've been in a room full of models before. I That's think I've told a, you oh. that story in the past. Just yeah. like I, I feel cro magnet. Yeah, it does. It fucks with you. Yeah, it does. And you're like, why am I here? Listen, it's not a surprise that I have a little bit of a gut. I, I get in a room with other actors that don't. It's like, fuck, fuck all this. I'm getting out of here. You yeah. feel like five times bigger than you actually are when you get around people like that. Oh, yeah. You're just like, oh, God damn it. Get yeah. me out of here, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, so he comes back with that. He does He does the town He and Argo. He wins Argo? the Oscar for Oscar. Yeah, he wins Argo. the Oscar, uh, yeah. Oscar for that. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, he's Batman now. Now he's Batman for fuck's sake, and hopefully yeah. he stays now with the the changeover. Yeah, with now Matt that Reeves he's taking not over. doing the individual on his own, basically, right? The right. standalone by himself, which it looks like a, a, a wise decision in retrospect. It's too now. much. Yeah, yeah. And it's not saying that he couldn't pull it off because he's done it in others, but the problem yeah. is, is you're bringing the baggage of a character that is now almost a hundred years old. Yeah, I mean, it's coming up on it. It's not yeah. quite there. You're right. And we've already seen it a bunch of bad ways, mm-hmm. but we know the potential of it. It's my favorite comic book character. Yeah. He's just because he's a dude who's got a lot of money. Yeah. But at the same time, he's just, he taught himself, honed his mind, yeah. got the physical skill, and just like, I love this character. Right. And if somebody's going to pull it off, I believe he could do it. That's why you like him, cause, not because he's a dude, because he's a man. You, you like him because he's, a, he's, he's not a, a superhuman. He's not a mutant. Yeah. He's, not a, he's just a regular guy who's got money, and he turned himself into a superhero by desire and dedication yeah, what it's, have you. Yeah. It's the brave heart. Yeah. When young William Wallace comes running up and be like, I can fight too. And his dad was like, I know you can fight, but it's yeah. our wits that make us men. You're like, that's, that is so true. Yeah, do it with the Scottish accent, goddamn. It's our wits <laughs> that make us men. That's good. Man. Man. Is it harder, eh? Man. <laughs> man, I don't know. <laughs> I know you can fight. <laughs> there you go. But it's our wits that make us men. I don't know man. about wits. <laughs> it's not wits. <laughs> that, that's Russian. Wits? Okay. <laughs> It's our wits. Is it maybe a more rolled? It's our wits. Our wits? Yeah, sure. It's our wits. I don't know. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I'll you like that? that? It's that our wits good. that make us win. I, like that. It's not I don't a know if I, I can do it without making my neck do that. I'm not trained. Uh, but that's always stuck with me, but it's the truth yeah. of the matter. Yeah, and but he's he, great, and it's so great to see him blowing up now and doing what he's doing. And I just, I know they, the, whatever that one, Live by Night or whatever that wasn't that good that came out near the end of the year last year. You're I, gonna make bad ones. Yeah, I, you, you're gonna have a a, a bad movie, and yeah. that's okay. You just do another. It's inherent one. in the process. Yeah, exactly. You, they can't all be 100. percent Look at Tom Hanks. Yep. We as an entire society go, I love that guy. Yeah. And no matter what he does, he, you know, the past few years he's put out some mediocre movies. But guess what? If one comes out this year and be like, guess what? Hanks is going to win the Oscar easy. I yeah. believe it. And yeah. I cannot wait to see it. Yeah. Because that guy's going to make me feel something. Exactly. And that I don't maybe necessarily want to feel. <laughs> <laughs> it's his thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just like, I didn't think you'd take me to this place, Tom Hanks. You, you know what? I want to tell you something, Matt Nost. In the interim of months that we have not been doing the show. Yes. I watched Philadelphia again. Do you like it now? When we get to Tom Hanks films, I'm going to have to revisit the, the not having it on my list. He's... That fucking good, isn't it? I don't know why it didn't grab me the first time I watched it in the 90s, but for whatever reason, this time around, I really enjoyed that movie. Plus, plus like, all the... the I side, was like, shocked. Uh, uh, Robards is... Yeah, Robards fantastic. is great. Fantastic. What a great voice for a villain. And the guy that plays the Colonel in Boogie Nights, like Andy brought... Oh, yeah, that guy. What is it? Does he directly say AIDS, or just brought that into our office? Brought that what? into our office. Yeah. yeah. Or oh, that sickness or whatever he says. And like yeah, the yeah. joke and the sauna. There's all these moments you're just like, oh, you know, just yeah. the, the, the things you never think about. I don't know why. I, maybe it was a big old duh for me that I just didn't think it was that good, but for whatever reason. But when I watched Plus the, the ending, man. Yeah, the ending is powerful. Just the first time I watched that, I was, oh, they're just panning the shot. And you, oh. you're like, <gasps> Yeah, it is. It was holding back. I didn't break down, but I was close the whole time to like, <laughs> <laughs> Just holding so, it back. So just let you know, you do affect my life sometimes. All right, let's move. It happens, <laughs> let's unfortunately. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, my number two yeah. might be your number one. Ooh. Which is Brando. That's my number two. Is it? Son of a bitch. We got the same top three. hi If you don't have the top one, then I think there's something wrong. Oh, there was something wrong with the list. Yeah. If you don't have my number one, then we gotta. I'm going to stop the show and just leave and never do it again. Well, right, which one, one? it'll officially be our Jack Frost. That's then. right. The double callback. Let's get on the sled now. Uh, all right. Brando, number two. Brando was the king in the 50s. Yeah. And the, and the little early part of the 60s, right? He'd come off the stage. He was a dynamo on stage. Then he comes and does Julius Caesar. He comes and does Streetcar Named Bazaar on the waterfront. Building still holds stability. Up. Yeah, of course it does. I watched it a couple of years ago. It's a Criterion collection. Yeah, that still holds up. up. The thing is, his performance is timeless. Yeah, man. The story, like some of the characters may or may not fade in yeah, out sure. of like, it's you know, time. relevance and understanding. Sure, like sure. I wasn't there and I don't, I don't know any, any priests right. that are like that. That right. to me is just a movie caricature. Yeah. Not to say that it didn't exist, because I didn't grow up in New York. Right, right, right. In Longshoreman's community. At that time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And have an Irish priest that may, may be from Ireland. Like, oh. I don't know. Can you do that one? Yeah, let's not. 
If somebody, I can do it if somebody shows me the impression more often than not and be like, I, I can easily do it. I tell you, Brando, you can't be coming in here trying to rile up the people. Yours, though, Thank has you. lucky charms. It really does. It, it comes does. close. That's the problem. I think that's where I'm going to go. I don't go high pitch, though. That's lucky charms. Highly, highly. <laughs> you don't do that. My mushrooms. You've got me mushrooms. My mushrooms. Well, that's what he's got in the, the Lucky Charms. Is the mushrooms. That's true, but it's his pot of gold that he's after. And that's, oh, that's what right. the, they represent. This is my pot of gold. This <laughs> is mine. It's like a D on It's Always Sunny. Oh, Come yeah. down to Patty's. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good on that show. Oh, it's great. This is my new character. Oh. Uh, but yeah, but, he disappeared. He was box office poison. Dude. Had to audition. Had to audition Godfather. for the Godfather. Had to audition. Marlon Brando. Can, it seems unfathomable. Of course to me. it does. Because he is, to me, like my first introduction to Brando is Godfather. Yeah. I mean, I knew him more than likely before that as Kal El. Right. Because uh, I definitely saw but that only before eight I saw minutes in the yeah. film. Yeah. But that's like, oh, that's Marlon Brando. Yeah. But my introduction to Marlon Brando was Godfather. Yeah. You see that and you're like, this son of a bitch had to audition for this? Just- have, you, have you ever seen the audition? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. Thank you, YouTube. Yeah, no shit. Uh, and and people whoever saved that uh, that video as well and and put it up there because it's so good. And but he, you know, uh, uh, Coppola talks about it. I put shoe polish in his hair when he came mm-hmm. over to see him. I put and like wads cotton of balls, cotton. Yeah, in his mouth. And he just made it. the choice, and and all the choices work. Yeah. To no end. Absolutely. You're like, Man, this guy. And and to go back then retrospectively and look and be like, oh, there's this pocket of all these just crap movies yeah. and underperforming movies. Yeah. And he had kind of, you know, sniffed his nose or thumbed his nose rather at Hollywood. Yeah. It was like, I'm, this is all ridiculous and it's beneath me. Yeah. You know, even when he won the Oscar, he didn't accept. No, he sent a little a woman, his last name was Little Feather, I think, to yeah, come I can't and, and accept it and to talk about the uh, atrocities going against the American uh, Native Americans, the Native Americans in the country. So, you know, he still was a political guy. I, you know, we've talked about it on the show before, but for people who are new, like I still tell you to watch this documentary that came out last year or two years ago, rather about, um, it's just called Marlon Brando in my words. And it's all these recorded voicemails and interviews through the years mm. talking about his life juxtaposed with this 3d imaging thing he had done with his face before he died. Cause he thought 3d was going to be the wave of the future. And if anyone's going to, was going to, digitally put him into movies he wanted to control how he looked so he had a a, a 3d uh wow uh, yeah he had a 3d company come and do him digitally rendered in 3d so that if he's ever transferred into movies he is transferred with his approval and he signed the contracts and everything in perpetuity for for the rest of time so it's just madness that he did so it's smart though yeah it is it really is you know why wouldn't you reuse it now if you can do it you're just licensing a character at that mm -hmm. point Mm-hmm. And it's really illuminating some of these voicemails and interviews that he gives uh, that they find uh, both into his life and then also into his personal life. They explore that as well, which is really unsettling, man. It's, it just kind of sucks, dude. Why can't a, an incredible actor just have a decent life and have a good wife and just like have a good situation? I don't mean good wife that she's not good. I mean like have a good relationship and like just be happy. But his self-destructive tendencies, his his demons from when he was a kid, I mean, yeah. just always came for him, you know? And, and it's sad. It's what I say. Like the thing that makes you successful sometimes is the thing that destroys you because it's like eventually... Mm-hmm. It's what it drove you and, and ultimately... You- you need to find the goal fulfilling. Yeah. Otherwise, once you realize it's unfulfilling, then you've lost all your purpose. Yeah, and then and you're you really out. lost. Yeah, yeah. yeah that exactly. seems to happen to certain people who are just like, I've been striving for this, mm-hmm. and I achieved that goal. Like, there are numerous uh, child music prodigies. Yeah. And they're amazing to a certain age, and then they just snap. Yep. And you're just like, how can you blame them? You've been driving them mad with this hours mm-hmm. on end every day for their entire, you know, Adolescence through yeah. teenage years, and she's like, "That's no way to grow up." We saw that in uh, with Marinovich as a quarterback back in those. Oh, he's days. coming back. Yeah, at forty eight years old, <laughs> it looks like a guy that's been doing meth for twenty years. By the he way, he really does, man. Oh, it's brutal. And then you, and then of course, Shine did a great job of really doing that in film form with Jeffrey Rush and yeah, uh, and Muller Stahl. What a great film. Yeah, and Brenda goes about the Godfather. He comes back with you know Last Tango in Paris. He comes back with these films and really reestablishes himself up until the end. And yeah, he becomes a joke with Alan and Doctor Moreau. But he just, whenever he shows up, he does good work. Still though, right around that time was what was it? The Freshman. The with Freshman. Broderick. Oh, so great in the Freshman. So great, dude. So just he's like had two comebacks, which is why I think yeah. He in to be in the, the middle of too. all this craziness, where he's still like a couple years later doing terrible movies. It's yeah, like, it seems like when he wants to, he'll actually give you a brand of performance. Exactly. And other times, like. I have, uh, I think, read more accounts of Island of Dr. Moreau and what that set was yeah, like yeah. than just about any film because yeah. it sounds 
bananas. But yeah. then there's like, what was it? The Heist with De Niro and Ed Norton. The and score. He's in it. The score. Yes. And Frank Oz directed that. Yeah. And he cast Frank Oz out of the room for his scenes because I don't take directions from a like puppeteer or he something. He said from Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy? I don't take directions from Miss Piggy is what he Okay. Said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's even worse. Yeah. Frank Oz is a good director. Yes, he is. And you just and at that point, he was already established as a good director. Yes, he had had this back with yeah. the Children's Workshop or at Sesame Street yeah. 20 years before, but yeah. got the guy a little slack. He's done yeah. a t- tremendous amount of work between hey, now and Fuck you, then. Brenda. You've done a lot of crappy movies. Fuck you. Yeah. You're telling me what the hell's up. Yeah. yeah and guess but what? If... Frank Oz walked out of the room. That's right. Because it's Brando. You got to yep. respect Brando. Yep. If you yep. want him in the movie. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So you're right, Matt. I mean, like uh, uh, he came back twice. I mean, The Godfather and Freshman. Freshman is great. It is. And then he up until the end, you know, he was occasionally showing up in films like The Score and stuff and doing nice work. And so, you know, it is what it is. And then he's gone. And mm-hmm. then he passed away, sadly. All right. So then our shared number one is a one choice and one choice only. Uh, John Travolta? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have it written on the top, and I didn't transfer. Oh. What's your number one? Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yes. You're right. How because did I not put that on here? We both have ones we should have. Welcome to the first show back, guys. Hello. We are rusty as fuck. Yeah. I have, I have him. I can see his name right up there. Holy shit! Yeah, I had it. I don't know why. Downey Junior. to me is the number one. That is the number one. But I, I think you're absolutely right. Let, a, let's talk about it. Yeah, I'm sure I had it on the well, list. I don't know why. Do you want to save? Well, let's do Travolta now, because if you're saying, because I think Robert yeah, Downey okay. is the unquestionable like number one. Okay. Because of yep, what he's achieved and also what's become of that achievement. Agreed. Agreed. So to, to, I, to, I put Travolta uh, accidentally at number I'm, one. I'm happy with him at two because I, literally I'm staring at his name on the top part of my list and yep. I'm like, oh my God, I just <laughs> all these sleepless nights. Just like, I have fucking didn't see three inches away. <laughs> but sometimes our fans love it when we have these moments. Yeah, I know. Great, but at the same time, human. it is frustrating. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's first yeah. show back. That's all right. Cut us some slack, you I mean, assholes. seriously, stop judging. Cut us some slack. Don't judge me. No, John Travolta in Pulp Fiction, because of course he'd, he'd done great work in the 70s. Hell, um, I changed my name to be John because of John Travolta back when I was nine years old. So to me, he has a very powerful impact in my what life. Do you, what do you mean you changed your name? What do you mean? What's your... What's oh, your... no, no, no. All right, well, when we cut... Nobody gets that. Really? Yeah, yeah. When that, we cut, yeah. even when we're off air, I don't get it? You know what? That would be great for a Patreon. Tell you what, if you donate, I'll tell you my actual <laughs> real name. It better be worth it. I guess so. I got five on it, guys. Yeah, I, 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 I changed it when I was nine years old because I just didn't... I really hated what I got named, and, and so I changed it. And only the people who sleep with me and are really, really close to me get that information so we'll see we'll see if i share it with the top 10 show fans we'll fair see if enough. i share it with you fair enough but yeah so but he he done all this great work in the 70s and you know saturday night fever and all this but then he starts doing staying alive which i love as a closetly stupid stupid movie from the 80s i just have a thing for staying alive i can't explain it Oof. for whatever reason i even have the soundtrack i even love the soundtrack Oof. and then he does these really terrible movies does the the whatever that spy russian one he did uh oh that thing's a lot of fun bro oh, that thing is a lot of fun kelly uh, preston look who's one. talking Look who's talking. Look who's talking too. Look at that. Yeah. And Which I like those movies. Then he disappears. The first two. He does all these terrible movies and then Pulp Fiction. You got to gotta revisit that Russian one. No. It's a lot of fun. With his mullet? Yep. What's it called? For reals or something like that? Uh, we've looked it up before in the past. We I've, have. I've okay. brought it up before yeah, and I can never yeah. remember the name of it. It's so terrible. Uh, it's where he met Kelly Preston. That's right. Um, where he found his beard for life. Yeah. I didn't say allegedly. I Secret didn't say allegedly. KGB inside of Russia and they're trying to simulate an American I feel town. like it's for keeps. Is that wrong? No, that was another 80s film, wasn't it? I don't know. It's it's genius. That's what it is. <laughs> anyway, so then he does that and then he comes back with Pulp Fiction and he is fantastic. And um, I just saw it again for The Cinephiles. We did Pulp... With Sasha Pearl Okay. Sasha came on as our guest. That's her favorite film, Bar It's the one that got her into film punditry. And so we, we revisited it with her and it was such a great episode. And it was nice to watch Travolta again do those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Because Travolta is back to kind of occasionally the hit or miss type things. I saw some random Western with him the other day from like last year on one of the pay channels. That doesn't sound like a good idea. No, it really wasn't. And so it was just like, shit. But when he shows up, man, he is magnetic to watch when it's the right material the right work so sometimes these people come back and maybe they don't consistently come back and do these great works like like Affleck is doing or Robert Downey yeah. Jr. is doing but like they still knock it out of the park every once in a while well he can still throw a surprise your way like uh, the people versus OJ oh yeah oh he's great in that because at first or as a uh, Shapiro whatever his name, Shapiro yeah at first I was like oh this is jarring I don't like this and then after like the, maybe by the end of episode two I was like you know what 
I like the choice. Yeah. I like that it's Travolta in it. Those eyebrows. Yeah. Everything about it, like it shouldn't work, and somehow it really works for me. It really does. The it experts. Does. The experts. That's the experts. What it's yes. That's what it is. Yep. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yep. It's a lot of fun. It you really should enjoy isn't, that. You it should really, really is. revisit that. <laughs> Ari Gross. That's right. It's, it's an excellent piece of film. That, you're such a liar. From what? I want to say like 91. 89. 89. There you go. Okay. I didn't want anyway. to. I thought it was just, just bridging into the early 90s. Yeah. Yeah, no, Travolta was. I mean, when you see Pulp Fiction, and you know thereafter, Quentin is not every time, but tries yeah. to find an older actor and put him into. Hey, mm-hmm. here's. I know you can do this. Yeah. You're amazing at it. Why not? Why not come and play with all these other actors? Right. Uh, and that was the first time we saw it, where he grabbed somebody that everybody agreed was kind of washed up. Yeah. And was done, and he, you know, he had had a nice run for a long time. Yeah. And good on you on that. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully you saved your money, and comes back and just gives he, he you know he is eye and eye with sam jackson yeah and sam jackson gets to have this very you know eccentric energetic lively character yeah and travolta's is way more laid back yep and it's just a nice counterpoint so at no point does he try and steal focus from him so he holds equal focus because of that because on some level it's weirdly he's almost like the eye of the storm yeah uh even though he is just as capable of everything sam jackson is doing mm-hmm. he just goes about it in a different manner yeah Every scene he's in is is it's hard to take your eyes off of. Yeah, him. and I love the way he fucks with Sam when he's like, "What you mean you got to walk the earth?" Yeah, they, we had a name for the people like that, Jules. They call bums. You know, there's all the things that he does to kind of mess with Sam Jackson. It's such a great back and forth. And then he does Phenomenon, which is personally one of my favorite John movie. Travolta films. When I met him at the Critics Choice Awards for the first time, I think last year or earlier this year, um, I got to tell him that. And that is a life highlight for me to walk up to him while he's at the table and he was standing up and we shook hands, took a nice picture. And he really thanked me for thanking him for that movie. He was like, thank you. You know, not a lot of people bring up that movie. That movie was a labor of love. And I was like, yeah, dude, you were just so great. And it changed my life. And it was such a great film. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you for it. And I don't, you know, like obviously you've done a million other great films, but that one is the one he was just like so gracious about it. So anybody wants to talk shit about Travolta, knock yourself out. I will never do that because I think he's just a great guy, dude. So and I love it that he came back and, and, and I'll go see most of anything he's in, which is why see, I won't. This is why I gave that stupid western a shot. <laughs> yeah, he would look. He would have made my list. Yeah. So that's two gone from mine. That's fine. Jason Bateman, Guy Ritchie gone. Yeah. He adds in there. I I wouldn't take him as high because the problem is there's so many like take him Pelham one two three. Yeah. Broken Arrow, Face Off. Broken Arrow is terrible. Yeah. Um. There's so, so many where it's just like what? It, oh, there's yeah. there was that one that came out a couple years ago with the guy from what was it the Tudors. And it's just like it became the trend of, oh, uh, yeah, the one with the Russia one, or their spies or yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that started the, all right, what is his either dumb hairstyle or facial hair yeah. for this poster? Yeah. And there just seemed to be a sequence of, what is it this time, That John? De Niro one was weird, too. There's a bunch in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was just like, he made my list for sure, because yeah. Pulp Fiction is that amazing, and he's done great work mm-hmm. you know, uh, since then. During but that time, yeah. There's also a bunch. Yeah. That are just like, no, nah, yeah. I'm not going to waste my life. I think what happened was that me mentally, I knew Robert Downey Jr. was number one. So I just kind of focused on the other nine and I just forgot to write it down. Yeah, because his is by far the most impressive. Let's talk about it. Because he was going through all that jazz, right? Right. Life is, is falling off the edge of a cliff. But every person that had worked with him was more than happy publicly yep. without being prodded saying, I promise you he's a genuinely nice guy. Yeah. Every single one, to a T, mm-hmm. if you just summated what every one of them said, yeah. that is the bullet point explanation. Boil down that paragraph. That, that's what the, the, you know, Mel Gibson was saying before yeah. we knew Mel was, you know, when Mel was still basically the equivalent of America's sweetheart. Yeah. And numerous people were just like, this guy's great. Please don't give up on him. Yep. He's just in a weird spot. And when he comes back, A, does not, not only does he turn what should be a nothing into a massive franchise. Mm-hmm. But then he creates an entire genre of tentpole movies that exist yep. because Iron Man was so successful. Oh, yeah. He launches, is in essence, the entire he Marvel, universe. The Marvel Universe. And then, From that movie. Right. And then indirectly, the DC Universe yep. as well because they see that it's possible to do it So again. there's, what, five movies a year, six movies a year yeah. that studios now bank on to make money. Marvel and Disney should just give him a stipend for the rest of his life of mm-hmm. like $20 million or something because like the only reason they get the chance to do these films is because he's yeah. so amazing. He's Man. the only person I think in that mix to me that is irreplaceable. And yet he, he is, says he's done Yeah, after the Civil War stuff so or uh, Infinity War rather so we'll see. I mean and he's great in Spider-Man Homecoming and he's not in it a lot which I love. 
He, he, yeah, he, they he, they use him in the right mount. Exactly, and he's great at it, you know. And he still carries that weight, you know. Uh, we just recorded Iron Man for the Cinephiles for in honor of Comic Con. It's coming out next week. But like revisiting that from 2008 to see the difference between that Iron Man that he had created there and the yeah. Iron Man that's now, you can tell the years have done their work on him. You oh know? yeah, it's only been ten years since he started doing it, or about to be ten years. But still, the the it's ten years. Yeah, though. it's a lot for a man in his late 40s, 50s doing these physical demands on his body in yeah. an action movie. It's tough. You know, Chris Evans is like in his 30s, so it's just tough to compete with these guys. So, um, But yeah, he would have come back, man, from drug addiction, from like... In jail. In jail, terrible stories of him like being caught running around in his underwear mm-hmm. uh, in a hotel in, in a seedy part of LA, like all this kind of stuff, weird people like showing up in his... Be- him showing up in people's backyards, like it's kind of nutty stories that you hear about him, but you're right, Matt, everybody spoke highly of him. Every single one. Every single one is like, no, he's, he's got a good heart. He's like, you know, he doesn't hurt anybody. He's just lost in this cycle Whereas of addiction. All the other uh, celebrities that ended up doing that, yeah, like Anne Heche or yeah, yeah. was it Margot Kidder? Yeah, Margot Kidder. I don't remember anybody sticking up for them. Not to say that they came out in bad mouth, right, right, right. but I don't remember the cacophony of voices all saying the same thing, mm-hmm. coming out like, hey, here to talk to you about your new movie. Oh, it's great. I wish... Downey Jr. could have been in it because yeah. I think he would have been great. And but like, just bring him up for no reason. Yeah, it seemed like <laughs> true. like this dude keeps coming up. Yeah, uh, yeah. You just thought he was a head case after a while, and just mm-hmm. like you know, he may be may have all the talent in the world, but his vices and demons are going to take him down. So yeah. why am I paying any mind? And some of the rumors and reports are that his dad introduced him to drugs when he was like twelve or eight years old or something. I believe like that. it. And so that I mean, because his dad's an, an addict as well, or was an addict as well. So it's like. You know, you kind of pass that cycle on sometimes to your kids. I'm sometimes, oh, yeah. sometimes that terrible, uh, cheesy uh, commercial from the 80s is true. I learned it from watching you, Dad. It's kind of true sometimes. And yeah. You Learn by example. Daddy. Yeah, exactly. And you say that with Downey. He does such a great... And he's a great... So great... I mean, like, even in the movies that aren't that good, like, the judge isn't that good, but he's good in him. He's always good in his movie. The soloist yeah. is not that great. He's good in it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But his... I mean, he not only came back... Yeah. On some level, like, you know, he is pushing Hollywood. Yep. He is the face of something that is a profit center and has defined this town now for a decade. Absolutely. 12 years. Absolutely, dude. Elevated comic book movies now can be thought of as generally, for the most part, every comic book movie that gets released is pretty decent. Yeah. Every once and again, there is a crap one. Just like, oh, that sucks. Green Lantern. Yeah. 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 Or, you know, some of the... Uh, DC stuff, just like trust right, me, man. Right. I want Batman to succeed every yeah, time he comes out. I do, course. I do. I have more affinity to Marvel because that's what I read as a kid. But right. Batman was, I read Batman the most, and then I didn't really fuck with much else of DC. Yeah, I like some things, but it's just like everything else in Marvel. I loved Wolverine. Yeah, I loved X Men. I love. I just I, I enjoyed the characters more. Spider Man. Yeah, um, agreed. But just the fact that. A took Iron Man, who I I always loved as uh, a comic book reader, because mm-hmm. he was just a norm- another normal guy, sure. who's rich and got a drinking problem. <laughs> but another rich guy, yeah. basically. But that was it was Batman and Iron Man were mm-hmm. my two that I most identify with because they were still dudes. Yeah. Uh, but take that, I thought that was a failure. I thought that thing was never. I was like, nobody knows Iron Man. Yeah. This thing that sucks because this is a great character. Right. Just this billionaire that comes waltzing in. He's got charm, and but his dad is an arms. You know, their, their company's an arms manufacturer. Right. So then dealing with that as you're trying to actually be a peaceful solution instead, yeah. and it's like it's such a great character. I was like, this thing's doomed. Yeah, you're like Psh, doomed, buddy. He he also rejuvenated Favreau's career. Yep, that's how good he is. Yeah, I agree. That's great stuff, man. All right, so we should compile our list. Yeah, yes? we should. There it All is. Right. There's our individuals. There's our first one back in quite some time. Let's put this thing together now. Like we used to in the old days, son. Yeah. So do you want to put Travolta at two? You think he's that high? You think oh, he's do, no, Brando? I'm sorry. No, three below Brando. Yeah. Or do you want to put Affleck up there? Um, well, we're saying RDJ at one, Brando two. Yeah. If you want, we both have Affleck at three, but at the same time, you didn't have Downey and he's now at number one. So yeah. it's your call. So do, if you want Travolta at three, you got him. No, I think Travolta at four makes sense because he's done like cr- some crappy work since he came back. Okay. So I think that's fair, whereas Ben is kind of in a second re- uh, renaissance. Now, the next commonality I think we have is Mickey Rourke. Right. Do we want to put that there at five? Yep. Okay. Since we both got him. All right. Now, I have S- McConaughey next. What do you have next? Uh, Mel Gibson at my number four. 
What's McConaughey for you? Five. Six. McConaughey is six. All right. Well, so you want Gibson to give me at, Gibson at six? six. Okay. And then McConaughey at seven. See, I, you know, he never slipped for me. All right, if you do that, then I get to take one off yours. I, I, I still wrote it down. I'm honoring your wish. <laughs> well, well, I'm we'll a see. man of integrity. There Please don't is. question. <laughs> I just, answer? I just think you need to revisit Newton Boys uh, and realize the oh, yeah, yes. the gym that is. Come I mean, on, Sahara. Sahara is fun. Oh, Sahara is so terrible. Sahara is fun. Oh. Uh, next, I got Clint. I don't have Clint at all. I have. Do we have anything else in common? We don't. Mm, no, we don't. So we might as well just do that. What about Michael Keaton? Didn't you think you messed him off? Yes, I do. And I should think we, actually that should be higher. Yeah. Should we put Michael Keaton like above, like a below Mickey Rourke? Yep. Okay. So Gibson moves down? Yep. Okay. Yes, this is the part of the show. Okay. All right. So. Well, let's see. I got Eastwood and Joaquin next. Right. You want to give me Eastwood at nine? Uh, Yes. Who That's you got fine. left? Uh, I have Jennifer Connelly left. See, I don't think she left. <laughs> she totally did leave. I don't that. think she left. That's my problem with it's that. It's all right. It's all right for you to believe that. I know. Clint Eastwood at number nine. Is that what you said? Yeah. All right. We need to have a lady in here, man. I think uh, I think she qualifies. Oh, we we have to? I feel like we need to. A quality of the sexes when it comes to I feel like comeback careers? What about Jackie Earl, though? It's tough to leave Jackie Earl off, man. But I see he's a more plausible case to me than Connolly, just because he was gone. Okay, he was absolutely gone. Oh, uh, I mean, mm. let's see who. Uh, do you have anybody else on there that a lines uh, movies? Uh, I got Joaquin or no. That's it. I got Joaquin. Yeah. But his no, his I had lapse Jackie was only Earl. Like five years. No, I had Jackie Earl and I had uh, M Night Shyamalan. Those are the last two that I had. Oh, dude, I still got like four. <laughs> no, I know you do. All right, well, then give me Joaquin. No! Yeah. Not over Jennifer. Joaquin never left. Not really. He, he only took three or four I years. Thought he was, I thought he was gone. He's I only thought gone that for was three or four dive. years, though. Jennifer Jennifer's Conley gone for 20 years. was still working. No, so was Joaquin. He, 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 trust me, I thought he was gone. He was off the deep end. All right, now this is going to be a good battle. Jack Earl is a better case to me than Jennifer Connolly. Uh, <sighs> Jennifer Connolly probably still maintain the same manager or agent throughout that entire duration because they were both happy with the situation what? as it were. That's Whereas a, Jack Earl that's got... That's not the only reason you stay with an agent I know, or but I'm just saying, it, it, she had a fine career. It wasn't great, but she had a fine career. Whereas Jack Earl Haley was gone. Let's take a look at this. Was gone. Labyrinth, career opportunities, Rocketeer... Yeah, still working. Rocketeer and, is a beloved right, classic. 91. Okay. So then... Still Some, working. Something called the Narhard of ju- uh, Justice. Doesn't matter. Still working. H- higher Learning. Still working. Mulholland Higher Falls. Learnings. Uh, uh, I remember when that movie it's came out. It's a terrible movie. Mulholland Falls, terrible movie. Inventing the Abbott, terrible movie. Still working. Still working. Dark City. Still working. Marginal movie. Go look at Jack Earl Haley. Requiem in 2000. Go look at Jack Earl Haley. It's going to be like a 15-year gap where That's... there is no entry. And, or if he did something, it's a bunch of shorts. It's a bunch of like stuff you've never even heard it's of. It's true. It's true. I don't disagree with you. You're right. Let's see here. So if you're going to talk drop-off, if I'm going to give up, because you're going to end up with, basically, this is going to be the bulk of your list at this point, <laughs> is what true. you're fighting for. It's not true. It seems kind of true. Losing it was the last thing Jackie Earl did of any... And then he does a bunch of TV stuff. Then he does Doll Man, whatever the hell Doll Man was. Nemesis. Yeah, but what years are we talking about? Maniac on? Cop. These are the 90s. And then he does nothing from 93 until 2006. Boom! 13 oh, years, fuck. man. All right. He came back from the dead. <laughs> All right. From the dead. I do it with protest, though, but I'll do it. Because I think we should have a woman on here. Oh, but all right. I think Jennifer Connelly would be happy to know that we don't feel that her career <laughs> so dramatically fell off that she's deserving of this praise. Right, fair enough. She's happy about the situation. All right, I so think- then how are we doing this? Are we doing Who's doing the drumming and who's doing the announcing this time? I forget whose turn it is because it's been a fucking year. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. It looks like you're setting up for drumming, so go for it. All right, I'll do the drumming. Welcome back, everybody, to the Top Ten Show. Yes, the drumming is back. Are you not going to do the uh, falsetto oh, yeah. top ten oh, gosh, and the uh, topic? <laughs> the top ten comeback performances or directors of the year. No, wait, not the year, right? What is it? <laughs> no, just, <laughs> Sorry, of the history. Comebacks. All right. The top ten comebacks <laughs> ever. Yeah. 
beautiful. Oh, I threw a yeah in there just to punctuate. At number 10 is Jack Earl Haley. At number 9, Clint Eastwood. At number 8, Matthew McConaughey. At number 7, Mel Gibson. At number 6, Michael Keaton. And starting off our top 5, at number 5 is Mickey Rourke. Coming in at numero 4, John Travolta. Uh, number three, Ben Affleck. And coming in the deuce, Marlon Brando. And the number one comeback performance is Robert Downey Jr. Yo, that's a good list. That is a good list. A lot of people on that list. A lot of movies, a lot of talent to explore. Yeah, a lot of different choices. A lot of wasted talent plus, for a while. Plus the the vagueness of comebacks yes. allowed for a little bit more you know room to interpretation. Even though we defined it, there was still within that definition <laughs> room to play. Yeah, that's right. So it worked out beautifully. There it is. That's our first list. So welcome to the top ten show. Those of you out there that have never heard it, that's God, what I the show is. I hope it's still recording. God, I hope it's still recording. It's, it's okay. still going. All right, you never know. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's our first list back in like a year on this version of the show. Uh, what a, what a what a fun time! Yeah, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for listening. Um, yeah, someone had brought up the fact that because we had a poll on this one, yeah, they, they appreciated it, but at the same time, they liked the fact that uh, they didn't know the topic in advance. Oh, well, guess what? It's going back to that. Yeah, we just did that as a one time, you know, because the thing is, like the Facebook poll. I don't know if you saw it. No, people started adding their own. Did they really? Yeah, and then other people were voting for it, which. You can do that? Uh, yeah, you can do that, can which do I didn't that. know at first. Like, you can do that. And people were adding, like, whatever they wanted to see. And that's, you know, that's fine. I don't really care. And okay. then some people took it. Like, I mean, at first I was like, well, even if yours wins, I'm not counting it. Right. Yours could run away with it. Unfortunately, that wasn't one of the four that we picked. You don't get to tell us what to do. Yeah, we we're still you maintaining how you control. tell us what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I knew we both felt the same on that it's issue. True. It's true. It is. Uh, um, but, yeah, so we'll go right back to what it is before, which we try. So for those of you that are new... Uh, we try and tie the show's theme in each week to whatever the, we assume is going to be the biggest movie release. Yeah. Or if it's a week where we've kind of already done that topic, we'll choose another movie on there. Yeah. Or if it's a terrible week. Or we'll then, split the atom. Yeah. Or we'll, uh, you know, just cherry pick an idea. Yeah. Sometimes we'll do uh, like best of summer or best yeah. of the year or what we're looking forward to, stuff like that. We've done right. Q&As in the past. Uh, you know, we're open to suggestions as yeah. long as it's not too arcane because we you know, we have to appeal to a mass spectrum. Yeah, and I know some people are going to ask, are we going to bring back reviews or Thunderdomes? I think we're just kind of going to focus on this show for now to see how it goes, yeah. see what the results are, and then we'll see if we want to add stuff to it. But uh, right now, we're just focusing on being the top 10 show and seeing where that goes and yeah. seeing the response. Of Don't people. get greedy, you assholes. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Don't get greedy. <laughs> it, it took six months just to get us in the same room talking on this show. That's true. It took six months. Um. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening to the Top Ten Show. Thanks for, uh, like we said at the beginning, thanks for, uh, you know, supporting us from the beginning and supporting us all through this hiatus and essentially motivating us to come back and do the show. We really appreciate it uh, from the bottom of our hearts, and we hope you enjoyed this show. It's our first one back. We're, we're going to keep going, and, and, yeah, we're probably going to tighten it a little bit more, but, hey, mm-hmm. we wanted to come back and have our show our way, and that was one of the things that we kind of, like, would have conversations about all the time while we were doing the Collider version of the show, and nothing against that version of the show. No. We just, we just you know, we always talk constantly about having to do our version of the show, and for better or worse, it may mean that we don't have, like, 100,000 listeners or 200,000 listeners, but we got to do our show our way, and it's just kind of our thing, so, you know, for both we, independent yeah, people. I think we can get there. Yeah, sure. I'm not concerned about that. Uh, it was just out the gate. I was, you know, new to Collider. Yeah, I hadn't done anything really over there at all. Yeah. So, and then you were you'd been there for a little bit. Yeah, but not a tremendous amount of time. Right. So it was kind of like you didn't know us at Collider. Right. And we just get thrust in, and you know, it, it sometimes it takes you a while to yeah. get around to seeing season one of True Detective. Yeah, sometimes, yeah like it does for me. It now. does. Sometimes yeah. you're just like, no matter how much people tell you something's good, you're yeah. like, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. I do that all the time. I can't fault you for having done it to us. Yeah. You know, everybody's yeah. life is busy. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So if, oh. if you're catching us this time around, we appreciate it. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully you tell somebody. That's, yes. That's, you know, my call to arms is if you know somebody that likes movies and wants to hear two assholes uh, talk. For an hour to 90 minutes, depending on what the topic is, uh, please tell them to tune in. Yeah. 
and they'll enjoy themselves. Trust mm-hmm. me, they'll enjoy themselves. And of course, I just want to say we we appreciated the opportunity to try and, and do a show on Collider, try and do a show on camera. Oh, without a doubt, it was a great challenge for us. It was great to hone it, and it, and everybody there was great in terms of talking to us and getting us like figuring out how to make it work. You know, and letting us add Cody to do the countdown on the whiteboard. That was always great, and and working with Adam and Cody was one of the best parts of doing that show over there. That oh, was my favorite part. Yeah, they were Nothing so supportive against, of us because we already had this. Yeah, right. Of course, but to have that dynamic in the room and you have no idea what they're going to be like or if they're going to be playful and want to you know sometimes be the butt of a joke yeah are you okay with that trust me i will gladly make fun of myself and you can join in on the laughter i have no problem with that right but as long as you're willing to take a joke and i'm more than happy to take one myself yeah uh because i think they're great if you get a good joke on me man that's it's one of my favorite things in the entire world you win yeah exactly just like dude you got me that hurts (laughs) that hurts yes it's funny and you pierce my soul yeah that hurts yeah uh, but yeah, those guys were excellent. But everybody over there was very nice, yes. accommodating. Yes, it just, they were. It didn't take off to the degree that all sides wanted, right. given the time frame of certain benchmarks needed to be hit. Right. So be it. Right. But now we're here. We're in the SK Plus podcast channel. We're back. We're excited yep. to do the show every week and, and bring you new top 10 lists every week and talk about our stuff, talk about our lives, talk about these movies and how they affected us. And hopefully, like before, we introduce you to some new films that you hadn't thought about or hadn't seen for a while. Or you know, a lot of people, a lot of comments I got on Twitter and on, on Instagram definitely mm-hmm. were people saying like, oh, great. Now I'll be exposed to movies that I didn't know about. They were so great. They introduced me to these movies and all the kind of sure. stuff. So any kind of indirect benefit we could have to improve your life and your enjoyment of movies and enjoyment of films and sometimes cheesy enjoyment of films, we are happy to do. Go out there and see the experts, guys. <laughs> no, please It's don't. worth it. Please go see You're the Dragon instead. Uh, all right, Matt, uh, where can people find you? Um, you could find me on uh, Twitter or Instagram at Matt Nost, yes. K-N-O-S-T. Johnny? Oh, yeah, you guys can always find me at the Roca says R-O-C-H-A, on Twitter or on Instagram. The Outlaw Nation podcast also on this channel, SK Plus, every Thursday drops. The Cinephiles, Cine-Files, every Friday on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. We just did Rushmore last week, so that's sure. coming up. And we're doing uh, Iron Man uh, next week, uh, this uh, week that you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on Tuesday. Uh, and uh, also Collider Movie Talk at 10 a.m. And then Game of Thrones every Sunday for the season. Uh, uh, or every Monday and Sunday for the season. And then, uh, and then I'll stop doing that show because the season will be done. Perfect. <laughs> that's the situation. That's the forecast so, of your life for the next three to four months. That's right. That's my life, motherfuckers. It's crazy. Um, uh, anything else, Matt? You want to add anything? No. You want to say? Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you know, uh, share it on uh, Facebook or Twitter yeah. or, or you know something. Help us uh, grow this. If we end up doing a Patreon, we'll let you know. Yeah, uh, it'd be nice to help uh, defray some of the costs. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, and if you're listening to this on SK podcast and you want to download it, you go to the, uh, Schmo's iTunes feed and then vice versa. If you're listening to this on Schmo's iTunes feed and you want to see a still image on YouTube play <laughs> while we talk in the background, go to the SK podcast channel page on YouTube. Absolutely. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, my name is Matt Nost and I'm John Roca and this is the top 10 show. Ooh.